Okay. We're not paying her for saying that, are we? No, nope. <laughs> apparently. Okay. Hang on a second. Apparently, my soundboard does not want to work. Give me a second here. Try it again. Everybody come see the Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blank and Sell Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your hosts, Blake, Sal, and Mark. Remember when Backstreet came back? And we all lost our minds. We didn't have cell phones, so our parents never knew where we were on Friday nights. We were your number by heart. I could still call it now. Keep thinking it's been 10 years since the 90s, but it's been 20 something. <laughs> But it feels like yesterday. Oh, and welcome to the Black and South Show with Mark, episode number 504. I am one of your hosts, Blake, and I'm not going to lie. I'm actually feeling really good for the fact that I had chemo this week. I'm not going to lie, I'm actually in a really good mood. So let's get to our co-host. First of all, the biggest deal in podcasting, a man who, for some reason, has not made any time to watch wrestling with us this week. Go figure. Sal, how you doing? <laughs> Thank God this double season is over. Oh, no, seriously. What a, a shitty ending. Dead serious. Shitty ending. It's bad when the highlight of our season was in January. <laughs> the highlight of our damn season was in January. We were there, at least. At least we were there. And we won for this once. Really good. And we were together. We were together having a good old time at the stadium series, but like that was literally the highlight of our season. Ooh, but, yeah. right, let's bring on our other co-host, the man the Mitch Legend, a man who I'm questioning his sanity based on stuff we're going to be on the show in a little while. Mark Dad, how you doing? Uh, frazzled. Stressed. Oh, 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 trust me. I have something in my notes. It's not even on the run sheet. I have something in my notes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Frustrated, whatever else it can use. Uh, wonderful. Literally, I have something on my phone from like three days ago that says "note for show" <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> on my phone. Thank you for but, but, so, like, but it has nothing to do with sports or the wrestling world. It's no, it's not on the budget. That's why it's not on the budget. That's why okay. I did. So anyway, well, before we get, before we get into that, um, we have in the background a brand new song. I actually found this on TikTok last week. And I'm like, it hit home perfectly for me. This is the Cole Ray, Feels Like Yesterday. Which I, I, I hear a little fun. I hear a little country twang in there. Country rock. Like country rock. Like I really, really like it. A lot. Is that a typo like, or does she annoyingly spell her name with two Ys? That's how it was on Spotify. So I'm assuming it's probably some legal thing. I guarantee it's some legal thing. You know? So probably. Hey. Our stuff like this is having issues getting in and out of the Zoom call. So eventually he'll be here. By the way, if you're on YouTube, you're hilariously watching him open and close the Zoom window on the bottom. Yes, I, screen here. It's actually really funny to watch. There he is. In and out, in and out, and it's very, very funny. There so, he is. While Wait. we're waiting for him to get his mic working, and I'll introduce him properly, he'll give me the thumbs up when he gets his mic working. Well, can you hear me? It sounds, yes. yes. It sounds like you're in a ton. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Hang on. This is tech tech problems galore. This is why, <laughs> this, I... is, this, is, this is why I keep this shit in because it's like we're doing a live. <laughs> and now my doing... now my camera's not working. <laughs> while he's doing that, <laughs> and he's gone. So I'll do that when he comes back. All right. So let me, let me go to my note. I actually, have on my phone. So just uh, you know, how weeks ago, like, it, was, it was WrestleMania week. When we had the guy for the dryer yes. shop up and he ordered the pieces and all kinds of stuff, we don't have a working dryer yet, yeah. by the way. We still don't have a working dryer. But still, we have the pieces sitting on top of the dryer, but dad apparently decided to yell at everybody and nobody's here yet. So, uh, <laughs> not joking, that actually has happened in the last couple of weeks. But the highlight of this was last week. Last week. This is like, after last week's show, so we couldn't bring this up on the show. After last week's show. I was in the living room with CJ. We're just chit chatting. And all of a sudden, dad's on the phone in the kitchen 
with the dryer, uh, the dryer place, or somebody. I don't remember which one it was. But anyway, he had a bunch of phone calls. He's on the phone. And all of a sudden, all me and CJ here, oh, it was, oh, it was me and Kyle. Sorry, me and Kyle. Actually, CJ was on. It was me and Kyle. And all of a sudden, all we hear is dad yelling, I need my unit service. I need my unit service. Over and over again. Bitch. And me and Kyle look at each other and just burst out of the laughter. <laughs> <laughs> this was, and, he, way, and I'm, I'm under exaggerating exactly how many times do you heard him yell this? Like, I'm under exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was with the just got a new dryer. <laughs> well, we're working. We're, at, we're waiting. We're waiting on shit. So that was the day where I was able to track the technician. Oh, I that was the day that the technician was told to be here. They were following the were following the tracking, and then we found out he would actually never was coming here. I still don't know what the hell we were tracking that day. I still have no idea what we were tracking. Because the wind. Like, well, when I first tracked the technician and went, okay, he's got two stops before he gets to you. Then it's one stop. Then it jumps from one stop to three stops. To negative one? Three oh. and then to five. <laughs> three. Oh. And then five. Oh. Yeah. So that's the then, negative. Right. Exactly. And then that, that's, that's when he called me. Oh, yeah. And I said, exactly. so what's going on? Yeah. And well, he, I love to know who this will spill, but in reality, we don't have a tracking dryer yet. We don't have a yeah. Yep. Well, the other thing I also bring up, I just remember this. So I text Sal, Sal this morning. So this morning in Milwaukee, we're recording this on Wednesday. We've been having like flash downpours all morning. Where it's like it's beautiful. <laughs> like right now, it's absolutely gorgeous outside. But like this morning, it was. I walked into a building. It was sunny and beautiful. I had my jacket in the car. It was so freaking nice. You know where the story is going? Yeah. I walk in. There it is. I walk out of the building. It is downpouring. <laughs> I get Wonderful. in the car, I get in the car, and yeah. I drive to my next stop. I get time I get to my next stop, it's done raining. <laughs> it's my next stop. 20 minutes later, it's done raining. And this segment is sponsored by Sonic. It is. But so on the way there, on the way there, <laughs> um, I just, you know, I, I did, by the way, Sirius XM finally updated their app. They updated their app, and they took over the feature where you could organize your stations. And boy, that frustrated me. They put that back in there finally this week. I'm very happy about that. Oh, good. And, um, they put that back in there last night, actually. So I organized the station again. And the last station on there, um, I, I, I sort of sung, I had to press it. And I sent the snap to Sal. It cracked me up. No joke. <laughs> this is what was on the fucking radio on Sirius XM. Whatever you do, don't put the on you. Let me make Can't make that shit up if I wanted to. Cannot make that shit up at all. <laughs> I think my exact reaction was shut the fuck up, really. That <laughs> really happened. But it's going to really happen this morning. Okay, guys, so it looks like our guest <laughs> is on the screen is working. So let's actually do a proper introduction now. When are you gonna come from down? When are you going to laugh? I should have stayed on the phone. I should have listened to my own mind. You never know forever. I didn't sign up to you. I got a friend for your friends to open. This boy's too young to be singing. All right, let's bring on our friends and yours from that minute. John Parker, John, welcome to the show. Hey, hello, hello. Hopefully hey. you can hear me now. There you are. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You sound fantastic now. I <laughs> fought through the trials and tribulations of every USB port not working properly. There it is. Technical problem. Are you, are you sure you're not a fan of Verizon? <laughs> I, I literally have a plug next to me just in case my base dies again like I did last week in the middle of the show. Just in case my oh, base God. You know what? Every time. podcaster knows this well, though. Just when you think everything's fine, nothing's fine. Uh-huh. So it's, it's those damn gremlins. It way. absolutely is. All right. So by the way, we, that, that was the best part. We had—I literally had a couple of stories to tell the stall while we were waiting for you. So it's all good. <laughs> it was all good. 
By the way, someone like, so I deleted that note off my phone, and I looked through, I was like, what the fuck is this random phone number? Then I realized that's our call-in number. <laughs> like, oh, that's never random phone number. My note pad is, oh, never mind, I know what that is. Never mind. <laughs> that I showed where my brain has been all day. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, well, look at the plugs. Look at the plugs. Uh, go pick up any book. I know I am available right now. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Orange Town Publishing in English and in Spanish. John, get your plugs out of the way here, too. Yeah, uh, you can check out my podcast. Uh, my main one is Bat Minute, where I talk about the Batman movies one minute at a time because I'm um, deranged. So just check check that out. <laughs> <laughs> All these seasons, I'm deranged. <laughs> All these seasons, I love it. You've got to be to do a minute by minute show. It's a ridiculous idea. It's absurd. Do multiple minute by minute shows. That's that's the crazy. Yeah. Thing. Oh, John, John. Seasons. John, you're allegedly deranged. That's it. Allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. You can't prove either way. I work for John is allegedly deranged, <laughs> and I'm an anonymous beaver. Oh, there you go. I don't have that no. on my phone. If I go up, if I pull up on my computer, I might be able to see that. But on my phone, I don't have those options. <laughs> uh, all right. Did you so, say you're an anonymous beaver fan? Beaver. Beaver, not beaver. Oh, okay. well, you're, you're gonna beaver. Make it, you're going to make me play it, aren't you? You know, like the teeth. Beaver. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Um, he's going to make me play it. <laughs> That's what the run sheet says. That's Sal. what the run sheet says. I'm an anonymous beaver. Sal, he said beaver. He's going to make me play it, isn't he? Yes. Go ahead. Oh Jesus! Oh no! Nobody fucking needs you. You wanna know why? I'll tell you why. It's your little front. Yay! Thank you. Ah. <laughs> the time I play that, every other people that have never heard that, it's hysterical to me. When I see reactions from people that have never heard that before, it's really funny. That's <laughs> oh, amazing. That's the second time we got heard that this year. That we got to play that for the year before. <laughs> So, all right, um, before we get into our normal stuff, because literally, the run sheet was done. We were done. I was setting up equipment. And all of a sudden, I get an email from my from the show email, from the from blinkasalshow.com, from our voicemail line, which has not, I mean, it literally only has set up still for the playoff prediction shows, which we're, we're getting ready to do soon, very, very, very soon. Probably before this show drops, we'll review the first playoff prediction episode. And, um, I'm like, why am I getting an email randomly <laughs> from here? So I check it. And I'm like, oh no, there's three voicemails. Hey. Why three voicemails? So instead of us doing this, we're gonna play our favorite game real quick before we move on. <laughs> Believe it or not, George isn't at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out, or I pick up the phone. Where could I be? I'm not, I'm not home. Google Translate game. Unexpected Google Translate game. But because we, we, me, it's me, Sal, and Mark have been doing this all for a couple of months now. We, Mandy was here last time. We had an emergency one. We did it last time. But since John is our special guest, and I feel like he's here all the time, <laughs> um, he pretty much lives here, we might as well let him have some fun. <laughs> okay. And read the, trans, the Google Translations. Before we play oh, the Oh, God. Right. Listeners, this is the first time I've seen these. So... Don't worry. This is the first time they're seeing it. Too. <laughs> the first time they're... I haven't even heard the voicemails. I haven't even heard <laughs> them. I haven't heard them. Literally, I screen capped it, threw it in the run sheet, and put the sound voicemails into the screen soundboard. I have not heard these yet at all. Oh, that makes it perfect. That so makes I'm it perfect. I'm blind okay. hearing these for the first time. Like, I have not heard any of this yet. So there are three of them. There's only two transcripts, by the way. There's only two transcripts. <laughs> it's funnier. The so, third one was so bad. Google didn't even want to up. It was the second one. That's the second part. The middle one is the okay. one. That's the okay, I just double I'll... check. As we're playing the intro, I double checked that it's still not there. As we're doubling the intro. So, all right. John, read the first one, please. Okay. Hi, guys. This is the Pepperoni Prophet huh? calling to wish Blake a wonderful 42nd <laughs> birthday this week. Oh, my God. I am just so happy that he's having a birthday this week. I'm so overjoyed and related. <laughs> that, that is not me making an error. Um, oh, so, why, <laughs> so why does it give him in the show of blessing? May you have a wonderful birthday and that all your wishes and dreams come true on your special day in your special day. 
Be filled with love and happiness <laughs> all around. Well, guys, you guys have a good week. I have to go and bless a lot of pizzerias in the tri-state area. <laughs> so have fun, be good, and be well. Pepperoni Prophet out. <laughs> Is he related to the Street Prophets by any chance? No, no, but if you listen to our anniversary show, our Pepperoni show, this is a callback to our Pepperoni show. So <laughs> that. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is the Pepperoni Prophet calling to wish Blake a wonderful 42nd birthday this week. Oh my God. I am just so happy that he's having a birthday this week. I'm so overjoyed and elated. I wanted to give him in the show a blessing. May you have a wonderful birthday and that all your wishes and dreams come true on your special day. And may your special day be filled with love and happiness all around. Well, guys, you guys have a good week. Stop. We have to go and bless a lot of pizzerias in the South State area. So have fun, be good, and be well. Pepperoni Puffet out. <laughs> it was pretty the... accurate, really. There was only Why a couple did... of errors there. Why did the Pepperoni Puffet <laughs> sound like he'd be dealing with a four-year running cough? Why does it sound like that right now? <laughs> So this is oh, the one that did not make the translation for some reason. There, I just the triple checked the email. It's not there. So I'm just gonna play this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened here. I guess there's nothing here. That's probably why there's no translation. Oh, it's, 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 it's literally what we're hearing is nothing. So John, read the next one while I blow it up here. No problem. So we've got one more here. Hi, this is a pepperoni private calling you again. <laughs> oh my. I, I'm so forgetful. <laughs> I forget to wish you guys a week on this wonderful week. So be good, be well, and treat each other for love, kindness, and respect. Pepperoni profit out. Pepperoni private. I think it's a good show. Right there. The episode title right there. <laughs> he, he, got, he got promoted. How about that? Yeah. Pepperoni private. Oh my God. I like the pepperoni private. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is a pepperoni private calling again. I'm so forgetful. <laughs> I forgot to wish you guys all yeet on this wonderful week. So be good. Be well. They treat each other for love, kindness, and respect. Pepperoni profit. <laughs> well, apparently, you equal weak. I don't know. That's weird. That's really strange. So, the pepperoni profit is a Jey Uso fan? I, I'm so in trouble by the pepperoni profit sounds so much older than he did like two weeks ago when we did the final show. I have no idea why he sounds so much older. Today. He's been through a lot, you know? I know, obviously. Like, it's a lot. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's the weather where he lives. You know, first it's nice, then it sucks, and then you have no idea what's going to come next. Not true, Mayor. Um, so, oh, hey, real fast, it is my birthday week. Birthday is on Saturday. So, there you go. I do, I, so, for those wondering, I am actually going to be at a wedding um, this weekend. So, that's fun. Um, and for also those who missed the very, very beginning, I am having chemo on Friday. So, yay for that. So, fun for that. So, this is going to be a fun week. <laughs> Literally, as this show is dropping, I'm going to be sitting in the chair, at the fusion chair, getting ready for chemo as this show is dropping Friday morning. So, for my second of five chemo treatments. So, happy so, birthday you know. to you. Happy birthday, dear Blake. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was beautiful. Yeah, that was beautiful. So that's that. So that's um. Thank you for that. So let's actually get into what actually was on the run sheet before these boys girls came in. So before we get to the wrestling, <laughs> please indulge the two me and Sal for a minute. We have something we have to talk about because we've been covering this story literally for a decade, <laughs> literally for a decade. <laughs> um, so after as of, as of when this episode drops, it should be officially announced because I think it's coming out Thursday. I think it's gonna be official because the season ends today. So I think the season tomorrow is gonna be the Arizona Coyotes will be moving to Salt Lake City. This is a very big deal because the Arizona Coyotes have literally been up and down 
under financial stress for literally over 10 years. <laughs> it's literally been going on for over 10 years. And we've been watching this back and forth for ages. Um, and the joke in here, they've been playing at the Mullet Arena this past season. And for those who have listened to our hockey shows, you the hockey episodes, just straight hockey episodes, you've been hearing us making jokes about college. So I texted Sal, and I'm so proud of the Coyotes for finally graduating college. I am so proud of them <laughs> moving on. I'm so happy for them. It's always that best time of the year for that. I'm so happy for them after all these years. Sal, any thoughts on this? Do, do, do you have the uh, the graduation song? Uh, no, I should, though. I, 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 just, I, wait, do you want the graduation right up in C or the um, like the, um, the, the Randy Savage? Not like the actual. Let me go find it. You yeah, find yeah, it. yeah. Tell yeah, me your yeah. thoughts about finding it. That's what it's called. I know. I couldn't think about it. I didn't know what it was. Um, and, and, wait a minute. Who's the keynote speaker for the graduation? Gary Batman. Okay. Oh, Actually, no. the dumbass owner. It's that dumbass owner. That's what it is. <laughs> the one selling or the one buying? <laughs> one selling. Well, the one selling. <laughs> apparently, they made a deal with him that they can. He can if he. If they were going to move to Salt Lake City. They're going to start at like a brand new franchise out there, but not being an expansion team. But if they, if he can get this building built, this arena built by in five years, they can bring the Coyotes back as a expansion team, but keep their history. What? What? I swear to God! I swear to God! I heard that doesn't make any today. sense. I heard that puck soup today. <laughs> that doesn't make any goddamn sense. You you're gonna move, you're gonna buy the team. You're gonna move the team. Then you're gonna sell them back in five years. No 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 no. Hang on. What it is is this team's gonna the Coyotes. The Coyotes we know we know are gonna move to right. Salt Lake City. But the owner right. in Arizona is going to keep the rights of the Coyote name. Okay. And then in five years at that new arena that he promised everyone's going to be ready, even though the even though the mayor said no, said fuck no, if it's ready, <laughs> uh-huh. within the five years, he can bring back the Coyotes as an expansion team. Oh, not team. that team, a new no, team. He can bring back the Coyotes as an expansion team, but keep the history of the old Coyotes. Well, I mean, it's it's just weird thing, right? it just, I don't, I don't know how that works. I honestly don't know how that works. <laughs> so that was can we like, just like give up on on hockey in Arizona at this point because it's just like a hot mess. You, you know, know, that just blew my mind. I just don't know what you know. So that news broke this week, and the other thing, I brought this. This is more for me because everyone knows my love right radio and you know sal it's in new york area i see the sound sonic sponsorship over there the sal's in the new york area so he knows even more than everybody else does the importance of one the only john sterling the voice of the new york Yankees, he's from 1989 until well three days ago when he retired <laughs> um he did not miss a game until what two years ago like period uh, basically 89, yeah 89 until 2022 he did not miss a single game yeah, what, insane. Oh. He's um, the Iron Man. I couldn't believe it. Um, five thousand four hundred and twenty regular season games and two hundred and eleven postseason games, including what was that four World Series, five World Series? Like, five, I believe. Yeah, five World Series. <laughs> That's insane. The, and of course, we know him as amazing voice, amazing calls. Um, it was some of the best like videos I've ever seen. I think on, on Dick's program last like four hundred. They put a camera in his booth. It's been hysterical to watch him like dancing and singing and having a great old time for the last few years. So if you if you I'm not I don't have a I don't have this clip. If you if you want to go on get lost on YouTube and enjoy yourself, look up John Sterling Yankee calls. They're some of the funniest shit you'll ever hear. Some of the funniest shit. It's so entertaining. Even if you don't know the players or don't know the sport, it's so fucking funny. He's entertaining as hell, but I didn't realize he started. He started in radio in 1971. Wow! Ridiculous! Okay. Absolutely ridiculous! Damn! Congratulations on a retirement. It's, it was a shock. It was a big shock. I was like, "Wait, what? He's reti- what?" <laughs> Not so he, yeah! Wow! It's surprising it's a lot like, of people. So he almost like has like that Bob Euchre because that's what we, exactly yeah, what I said to Mandy. Exactly what I said to her. Perfect yep. example would be a Bob Euchre retired. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So, so here in Milwaukee, perfect comparison, absolute perfect comparison, and that might happen soon from what I'm hearing. You know, yeah, that may happen soon. So that's that. Thank you for for uh, appeasing us on that one because that was a big deal to us. 
That being said, hang on, hang on a I lowered the volume for John's intro. I forgot to turn it back up. There we go. <laughs> and now let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. Um, so originally it was just going to be an AEW preview show, and then weird shit happened. WWE, we have to cover. Um, whoa, weird shit happened. <laughs> uh, first of all, massive injury happened right before Monday night. Broke right before Monday night. Raw, Rhea Ripley. Mommy herself was forced to vacate the women's world championship, ending her reign at 380 days. Blasphemy. Oh. By the way, that what that by the way, she beat Bailey's record for the longest women's title reign by one day. Do you think Wonderful. they did that deliberately? They were I, like, I, 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 like I a thank know. you. I don't know because she got hurt the week before and they literally figured it out over the weekend that she wouldn't be having to lose the title. It's one of those situations where you couldn't do it any sooner than Monday. You couldn't do it any yeah. sooner, but there's no show. So, like, you can't do much about that timing. You know what I mean? By the way, so the injury, the injury apparently occurred. It was a freak landing when they had them, him, her to live had a backstage brawl, and he had a freak landing when she got thrown in. She got thrown into the um, wall and landed wrong. It had nothing to do with how she was thrown. She landed wrong. And, um, no, it had everything to do with how she was thrown. You didn't hit Liv Morgan. You didn't hit Liv Morgan. Um, so, Liv Morgan, Liv Morgan is. Worse than scum. Huh. Let's see who sells that? today. There it is. I, I I kind of figured that it had to be the running move where Liv kind of like body checks her into the from wall. What I heard is the landing, not the movement. From what I've heard, right? Um, so it was an AC joint sprain. She's going to take her four to six weeks just to get to mobility and to at least be off television for at least three months. Could be longer. I personally don't expect to see her until SummerSlam, till SummerSlam hype personally. Um, so that now the now the um women's championship on Raw is vacated. By the way, here's some weird irony. I said this from the South. Um, remember when John Cena got hurt back in like 2007, and he had this long ass title reign, and he got hurt and had to vacate the title. Yeah. At 380 days. Exactly the same. Exactly what? the same. Oh, I was stunned. I was like, what? <laughs> it, it must be the John Cena curse because he came at it. WrestleMania. So I cannot believe it. I was like, "What? How is that possible?" Like, absolutely bizarre that how that happened. So, um, um, no mean, money for a while. The positive I, side I, is, you know, uh, if if everything else in a career ends up being like John Cena, then it's going to be successful, right? You know, so just take it for now. If it's like John Cena, should be back in like a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean. I'm kind of looking at this, okay, you know, love hate kind of thing. Where, as a fan, I hate that she had to do this, but as a person stepping back from it, if this is something she needs to have time off for, then 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 do it and come back healthier. I will say, Mandy noticed thinking... that she was wearing a brace during many a week stuff, so I have a weird feeling she had an injury. And they were hoping she'd get through it. And then this just aggravated it. I have a weird feeling that's what happened. That's probably it. And <laughs> that's my personal opinion. With with the time off, I'm wondering if they would keep her character the same or if they would tweak it. Oh no. You keep mommy the way it is because she was getting over at the face. Bring her back at the baby face, you get the ridiculous pop. You don't change mommy. You keep her the way she is. I you basically just, say you that you just keep her away from the you just move her away from the judgment day when she comes back. That's what you do. Or she comes back and she kicks Dominic out of the group. Or just, or I, I, I actually, I'm this guy. Okay, quick WWE talk. I always feel Damian Priest is turning face. Too. So I don't feel there won't be a judgment day when she comes back. That's just my yeah. opinion. I don't think there'll be a judgment day. Because um, they, they, just based on what happened on Raw this week with the video package they put out for him, yeah. they're, turning, they're turning him. Yeah. And I, I have no problem with that. I think he's fantastic and I think he deserves it. But it's like they're definitely turning him. So I have a feeling there won't be a judgment day. At least the judgment day we know. Which mm. is... So. Well, maybe Edge will come back and take the group back. Adam Copeland's too busy in um, the AW doing random shit. <laughs> no, I was just actually talking to somebody about this. Adam Copeland's one of the only things in AW that actually right now is telling a story. We'll get into AW later. But he's, <laughs> the, he's actually telling stories over there right now. So we'll get that later. Trust me. Well, I have to say, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> I love but, the way yeah. he's just doing what he wants. Screw it. Who cares? We'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> but, uh, we'll yeah, later. But, but, <laughs> Damian Priest resigned with WWE for what, seven year contract? I don't know. I don't know the confirmation on that. I know he had signed. I didn't know. I didn't know details so 
There's been no details on those contracts this time, ironically, actually. Because he's hanging without letting that stuff out. The only thing I've heard about contract is Drew currently is not signed to a long-term deal. He's currently signed to they're they're working on a long-term deal and he's working like a a, a short-term like five to six week deal right now while they figure out his long-term deal. Okay. So okay. Which whatever. Good for him. That that's the way the company wants to hang on to him to make sure he doesn't jump ship. I have a feeling there's more to this, but I just don't know the details. Like I know Becky Lynch's contract just came up and she's taking a break. And her and Seth are taking breaks right now for obvious reasons. So mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So um the, the other injury news that broke update, I should say. We've been talking about this. I can't believe it's been two years, by the way, since this happened, by the way. Um but he announced that after his two year scans for his neck, there is a good chance he will not be returning to the ring, period. Which is wow. sad. I'm gonna lie. Sad face. What was that though? Sad face. Yeah, it's sad. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. Biggie, uh, how can I put this? He's like the igniter of the group, where basically he comes out with that high energy and it's infectious, and he has just that that boom in his voice when he gets so excited that you know when you bring out the new day, it's just something like a jubilant celebration. As I told Sal though. Because well, I was making jokes about AEW. He's heard AEW. They'll probably clear him in minutes. Um, I, I I was saying, I have a feeling he's having more fun now. Because I saw him all over the place on WrestleMania weekend. The man did not have to take a bump, but he was having a fucking blast mm-hmm. all weekend. So, like, he might just be realizing, oh, I could have fun and not have to take bumps? Okay. I see a problem with this. <laughs> I, I see him being a coach in NXT. Or behind the scenes, you know, working somewhere. I don't think they'd make him a road agent. Can, and, they, can, he, can he run promo class in NXT? Just for the fun of it. That would be hysterical. My be thing is, so much fun. Here, here's the thing. I would love for him to replace Booker T as a commentator. In okay, I, I am 100% on board for that bullshit. Oh, my God. He cannot get more annoying. And then he gets more <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Holy fucking hell, he gets more annoying. I, I don't know what but okay. I, mean, I joke about NXT all the time. It's something I block it out. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with him during um Stand and Deliver. I it, he, I think he maybe drank maybe it was too early in the morning and he drank a red energy drink because he was on a different level of stupid <laughs> uh, during Stand and Deliver. Well, he would wake down and like, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> are you sure he wasn't drinking Snoop Dogg's gin and juice? No, that was, <laughs> we, I don't think he even knew about that yet because it was before radio started. So I don't think that joke even worked yet. <laughs> but he definitely has something. Because all, even Vicky like, even was calling him out like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, that, that seems like a logical thing for Biggie, though. Get, get him doing something yeah. like that. You're that not going to get rid of him. You know? That would be so much fun. Him on commentary would be so much fun. Yeah. He's got to bring the energy down to like, a, maybe I think down to like an 11 instead of a 15 where he normally is. And then we'll be good. We'll be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so we were talking about Judgment Day a minute ago. Over on SmackDown, I was not expecting something big to happen on SmackDown this week. I figured it's a couple of weeks before the draft where nothing major is going to happen. <laughs> and then they decided to, Monday Night Raw, they joked that Monday Night Raw was like, the, was like New Year's Dash in New Japan where it was like a celebration and we're going to have random tag matches. We're going to have a good old time. And then we'll like, do one major thing. SmackDown decided, fuck it. We're going to have fun. We're going to do, we're going to set up a number of contendership mini tournament. We're going to do all this random shit over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, for next week, by the way, on Friday night this week, we're going to have AJ versus LA Knight for the number of contendership for Cody this week on SmackDown. I was like, okay, sure. Let's do it. We're going to get out of the way. <laughs> um, but anyway, so on, on SmackDown, Paul Heyman. So, the, so apparently we found out that, that Roman Reigns' locker room was not actually Roman Reigns' locker room. It was the champion's locker room. We just didn't know that because it was a pandemic. He was a champion the entire time. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so apparently it's the champion's locker room because it's now Cody's locker room. And um, the, the bloodline tried to get into the locker room and they said the Nightmare of a Nightmare on it. And Paul Heyman said, well, we lost and there are consequences for losing. Keep that in mind. Uh, later, in the ring, he cut this. He cut this promo for Roman. That was the most face thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Taking blame for the loss, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, what? 
okay, we, are we turning face all of a sudden? Well, keep that in mind, because in literally 30 seconds, <laughs> Sol Bacoa takes the microphone from Paul, says the exact same line that Paul said to them earlier, that consequences, that, that losing has consequences, and consequences brings change. Looks at Jimmy, gives him a big hug, says, I love your brother, and then from behind, Hamatanga shows up and attacks um, Jimmy Uso. Out of okay. nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Completely out of nowhere. Uh, everyone knew he was coming in, but I didn't expect him this week. I didn't expect him on that show. <laughs> Out of nowhere, he jumped Jimmy Uso, and they completely destroyed Jimmy Uso and literally wrote him out of the bloodline. Completely wrote him out. Oh. Um, by the way, apparently he's hurt, and this is his way of writing him off television. He has like apparently a, a, an injury that he's been fighting, so they're taking giving him some time off, and this is his way of writing him off, which I do not expect it. I love that because at least we're giving somebody the, the heat. Like, I give credit where it's due. That's really smart. Mm-hmm. So... Then my favorite part of this, it wasn't even that. So they have this whole beatdown, and Ro- and and Paul takes out the tribal chief cell phone and goes to say, Paul Roman Reigns. And before he can finish his sentence, Solo takes the phone, smashes, throws it on the mat, and steps on it. And the As crowd reaction, the crowd reaction is like, <laughs> it was straight out of a fucking TV show. Like <laughs> it was a great moment. Like, whoa, that happened. <laughs> Well, there you go. I have a feeling that the trouble chief just turned babyface. <laughs> and Paul Heyman is going to be following him later. So, <laughs> well, well, wasn't Big there star. wasn't there a line that Solo used that basically that where I it's like that I literally just said what? <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm con- change these consequence consequence. No, 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 no. <laughs> where it looked like Paul was going to question or idea question, and basically oh, that was later. Was... That was later in the show. That was later in the show when Tom right. Tom got... Up confronted him and then terrified Paul, and then he said, "From the or from from the tribal chief." Right. Paul was very confused. Paul was <laughs> so fucking confused, and it was awesome. And then like great TV right there. Fantastic. Yeah. So yesterday there was an announcement by Paul Levesque. Julia, who we saw at um Tim Deliver, is officially debuting at the next PLE in Toronto, NXT Heat Wave in July, and of course it's a July weekend. And she, they also said she will be receiving a title match on the show. Okay. Which title that's, we don't that's know? That's strange. Well, Which title we don't know? Because there's going to be two women's titles by then? Because they're already just announced North American Women's Championship? So we don't, I'm assuming she's going to go for the main title because they're not going to make mistakes. They saw the company and going to have her go through the, the, for the minor title. But um, we'll get to that later. Um, so her and I'm taking, I'm taking my shots early. Taking my shots early. <laughs> But yeah, Julie is coming in and getting a title shot right away at Heat Wave. I'm still surprised she got announced for um, that new promotion in Japan. I think she's having a match like imminently, you know. Um, we're going to run a, um, I, think, I, forget, I think it was Stardom announced that, announced that they might be working with um, Dakota Kai and Io Sky. What's going on? I mean, I in a good that, way, what's going on? I heard this this morning on Everything with Rich Fan. Like, we were okay. talking about it this morning. Like, okay. <laughs> That so, was a big one. I'm like, what? It's happening. So, What's going on? <laughs> Stardom has an interest in them. Well, that's part of the whole deal with, like, it's been a bizarre. Remember, randomly, we had freaking Shayna and Charlie Dempsey had fucking blood for it. Okay. But you've <laughs> also got to remember, though, Julia just left Stardom to join this new company. Mm-hmm. What's it called? It's got some stupid name. It's all Marigold. That's Something it. Like that, yeah. And um, they're now not on good terms. So. The if noises. Julia's got a deal between those, I don't know, stardom seems odd to throw into the mix. <laughs> the weird one. But we'll find out more if we get closer. I don't know anything else, but that's what I'm hearing. And last but not least, Sal was going nuts last Monday. <laughs> started doing the uh, pieces. And then this past Monday, they, they, they threw up a fucking QR code. And I feel like we all time traveled and did it again. We all fell for it again. <laughs> and we all scanned the QR code. And we'll sip Sal because he didn't want to draw. We all scanned the QR code. And we all did the puzzle that came with the QR code. And that led us to a, vo- led us to a, um, a website that pretty much is teasing Uncle Howdy. Returning <laughs> soon. Um, from what I'm hearing, this is going to be a Wyatt tribute group. And it looks like they're going to finally try to bring together the Wyatt Six. Finally. Okay. You could kind of make it like the the people in the group kind of worship him. 
Exactly. You know? Well, one thing I haven't talked. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier. We were talking about this earlier, and I think we narrowed it down to Howdy, which is obviously Bo Dallas, Alexa Bliss, yeah, Rowan Strowman. Eric Rowan sounds like he's coming back. Braun Strowman's coming back from injury soon. Um, Matt Hardy is teasing things, and Matt Hardy is a weird one because I forgot because I remember when Sal brought it up to me, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. But then I thought about it more, and I'm like, Matt Hardy makes sense because they had it. They were tag team partners. They had a final deletion match, uh-huh. and broken Matt and I said to a friend of mine, broken Matt would be a perfect voice voice box for this mm-hmm. because he can make everything make sense to us at home. <laughs> the thing that Bray always had a hard time doing, right? Matt could actually do that for us, where he can explain it better for the layman for people at home. I think that would work so well. Well, I think they would have to have something to entice him back, you know, because he hasn't re-signed with AEW. And I don't think like... he would just go back to WWE if they weren't going to do something with him. I, uh, he's teasing it. It's coming from Matt, so mm-hmm. we'll see how that works out. And then somebody, and then I threw out there maybe an extra name, maybe bring up Joe Gacy and throw him into the group. Uh, yeah, there Eric you go. To Wyatt on Wyatt freaking um, Mick Foley thing anyway. Yeah, might as well bring him up. And we can stop at the stupid like spinning camera thing they do in NXT and like do something here. So yeah, I that would be if you do put Joe Gacy into the mix, I think he would have no problem fitting in. Exactly. So that's happening. More news as we get closer. One last thing before we get into AW stuff. So Windy City Riot happened this past week. I purchased it with the plan of watching it the next day. Because it's New Japan, strong. I always like to watch New Japan, strong pay-per-view. It's only 20 bucks. So I'm like, I'll drop 20 bucks, and I'll watch the show. Play and watch it the next day in full. Well, what I did not expect to was to wake up in the morning. Because <laughs> normally, I try to avoid spoilers. You can ask that. I am very, very good about avoiding spoilers when it comes to New Japan shows. Oh, you're lucky. Very, I'm terrible. I find everything I, out straight away. I am very, very good at it. <laughs> I am extremely good at it. Like, I will. I know what to turn off on my phone. I know what, like... Like things that you, I, I in Best of Kingdom, I am extremely good at avoiding spoilers. Oh, see, see, I'm a sucker. Like, I, I get prepped, even like for AEW, obviously, I have to watch it the next day. So I wake up, I put it on, and you know, while it's doing the intro and stuff, I'm like, oh, I'll just quickly check my, my uh, <laughs> notifications, and bam! There you <laughs> go, that's where you get it. Yeah, so I, so I didn't think anything of it because the main event was on Tente Naito versus John Moxley for the you know, IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Mm-hmm. I didn't think anything of it. Because the math literally was set up a week ago, so I didn't think of anything of it. And so I would come the next morning, and the first thing I open my phone is a multiple, multiple photos of John Moxley holding the IWC uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, what the fuck happened last night? That's a spoiler I actually didn't mind. Because I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like, that was my exact reaction. I'm like, so I, I was surprised to... as well. I was because I I often watch them, but I wasn't going to watch this one. I was, I was like, oh well, well, you know. <laughs> well, there was two reasons. I wanted to watch that. And I wanted to watch the Jack Perry Umino match. Those are the matches mm-hmm. I really wanted to watch. And I knew what was going on the Jack Perry thing because it was going on. I think it was, was it Friday night. So I think it was during SmackDown. So I did see pictures of like Jack Perry um, messing with the Chicago crowd, wearing like wearing the Crimey River jacket. Like that was amazing. I'll get to Jack Perry in a minute. But um, I didn't ever expect in Mox to win the championship. Oh, oh. Fucking hell. And the match was really good. By the way, it took three um Death Riders for him to pin Nitro, by the way. It was a really, really good match. A really good match. So is he is he going to be spending time in Japan now? But what I'm hearing, what I'm understanding, based on the promo, he cut afterwards. I was actually just talking to Mandy about this. New Japan really, 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 really needs to get youth going. They need a youth movement really, really, yeah. really badly. And they messed up by not having Okada put anybody over. And they messed up not letting Jay, having Jay White put anybody over mm-hmm. where they left. So now they need someone to put people over. The problem is you have people like Naito and all them that don't want to. They don't want to put anybody over. Ah, so bring him in to do so it. They're bringing Moxley in to do the youth movement. Mm. Now, Mox pretty much said I may, uh, that they're doing it in the next New Japan show. I, I think it's um, on the 4th, on May 4th. It's headlined by Moxley versus Renderita. Aha. Uh-huh. And then the next New Japan um, New Japan America show is Moxie versus Umino. There you go. So Mox is here to help the youth movement. Because he doesn't he'll give a fuck. Oh. He's not going to give a fuck. <laughs> and he's going to do it. I love so, it. I love it. I'm guessing that President Tanahashi has no issue with this. I know Tanahashi is currently apparently in a weird thing with Nick Nemeth. I don't know what the hell's going on over there. 
<laughs> Nick Nemeth apparently will not defend his title, his global championship, unless he gets Tanahashi. That was a thing that happened during the show. Okay. Well, that could be a fun story. So, so is it possible that Chang could defend against Nick Nemeth for the belt? I don't know. I don't know. I, the interesting. I, I, I think I hope they hold on to have him hold the belt. My problem maybe at all in. No. Here's my problem. Oh. Hello, Sal. Here's my problem. I'm with you. But I was about to get to the problem with that. I, I have a feeling if they're going to do this, they have to drop the belt by Forbidden Door. Mainly because of the G1. Uh, there is no uh, way. Yeah. There is no yeah. way in hell if a, if Mox is healthy that, there, that TK is going to let Mox disappear for three weeks to go to the G1. And that champion no. has to. No, there's no way. Point. There's no, no way. That that's a good point. Oh, that's a shame though, because I was no. hoping like you could do Forbidden Door. Oh, you could do a title change. Please represent in New Japan. I said, I mean, you could do a title change. You can make a big title change out of it on that night. You well, can make that, that damn show with a title change. You could do that. But, but the other thing you can do too is whoever wins the G1 would be number one contender against my problem, my problem is Mox have to be in the G1 as champion. Yeah, you've it's got to rules. enter. Okay. That is the rules. The champion has to be in the G1. That's how it's always been. That's uh, the thing. That's okay. how it's always been. So that's the issue here. And there's no way. In, I, I have the schedule for the fucking G1. Okay. And I think, I think I mean, AEW has a hate review during the G1. Ah, <laughs> during okay. It. Like, so like, yeah, the G1. Well, I mean, it's not that far-fetched. It's July 20th to August, uh, August 18th. That's the G1. Holy crap. That's how it always is. Right? I know. But so then you know, well, not for nothing. Nothing. if they have this working relationship, I mean it wouldn't be yeah. the worst thing in the world. I, I, I guess if they plan it right, we'll see what happens. We'll, get it. we'll find out when we get there. If they don't drop the build the forbidden door, that is gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting to see what they do. Because normal circumstances, you're doing a tell they have Dominion and Forbidden Door in June. Those are the those are the two big shows. If they don't do a tell change at either one of those. That's going to be interesting. More so, to me. Mm-hmm. You could have Zack Sabre Jr. be your ace in the hole. Zack Sabre Jr. beat Riddle for the um for the um for that um for the TV title. Was it a new, new world the world draw. title? New Japan world yeah. title. Yeah. And Matt Riddle apparently no sold the finish and walked off. Yeah, and oh. didn't just walk off if I uh, heard rightly. He was like walking off smiling and yeah, high five. No sold everything. It was very Austin Aries like. Very often, yeah. there. <laughs> well, there's a name from the past. That's a real shame that, though, because I, I like Riddle. I wanted him to have like like this to be his moment to prove himself, and it sounds like no. <laughs> no, he walked off like like a like a scumbag on that one. That's weird. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, go, by the way, before, by the way, by, by, no, by the way, I remember that Sport Twenty this week RVD is announced for a collision. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> I, I love Shocker. the way I love Whoa. the way they didn't just like put it on like a. Well, I was going to say Twitter on X, but they actually announced it. <laughs> well, TK announced it a while ago. Like, TK announced it like two months ago. Like, he announced it like two months ago. <laughs> will, will, will he be coming to his new theme music? Because I get high. Because I get high. Because I get high. You know that. But um, that's funny. So anyway, I won't be watching it live. I'm going to be at a wedding, but I'll watch it. On, I'll watch it. I definitely. <laughs> Normally, because there's something I mean, I did not watch Collision or Rampage. I didn't even bother. I listened to a recap show of Collision and read the results of Rampage. I didn't care because I had too many things I was to watch. I will watch Collision the next day. Just <laughs> fucking do with RVD. Just see how that goes. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're talking to someone who's never missed a single AEW show, whether that be Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, Dark, Elevation, Battle of the Belts, Pay Per View. See every single one. So Don, I say the, do Don, it. Don, why does Battle of the Belts still exist? Uh, I, I I don't know. It's a stupid idea. <laughs> uh, well, it's not. No, it's a good idea. <laughs> but has, a, has a title ever changed hands on it? Once. One Once. time in 10 specials. <laughs> One time. And it was actually Cody's last match, I think. <laughs> like it was Cody's last match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know, obviously, if if the titles always change hands, that also defeats it. the point. But you've got to mix it up a little bit. Come I on. think it was when Cody lost to Sammy Guevara. Oh. Cody left. And they loaded up the company. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know Tony said that Nigel was on assignment, and my thing is, oh boy, this... that was awful announcement. By the way, why the fuck with the Danny Magic and fucking Shivani? Like, what was that? Where was Danny Magic body? commentates a lot. I'm fully on board. But why? Where, where, where was Rick Body? Like, where, where was he? Like, but you I want Papa Magie? He's better. I, I, oh my I, god. I 
I don't Fine, know. I have so many issues watching that. I really did. Dude, I was, dude, I was, dude, I was mean, fucking proud of my second half of it, but it was, I was having my issues. <laughs> is, 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 I, and where's Excalibur? Excalibur doesn't do Saturday. He doesn't work Saturdays. You know, I mean. He had to, get his, his, he had to, he had to have his uh, mask washed, so he had to take that off. <laughs> you gotta do it at least once a week. And, and yeah, at least once a week. Hand washed. You know, you gotta have at least once a week washed. <laughs> and dry cleans. <laughs> We, we, this holds their pay per view. This holds their pay per view and everything. I mean, you got to make it look good. With, with Danny Magic, <laughs> with Danny Magic, I mean, is there going to be a change in the announced team? I don't know. I, I, why is he not wrestling? <laughs> why is he not wrestling? No, well, that's the thing. Be... I, I may say, and I love his commentary. I do. But why is that all he seems to do at the moment? It's a bit weird. By the way, Sal, not watching. Maybe he's hurt. Not was it Rampage? I don't remember what the fuck show it was anymore. There was so much stupidity. What whatever show it was, I'm glad you didn't watch it because you didn't have. Oh, no, it was Rampage because Manny went to bed early. Manny went to bed early. It was Rampage. You didn't have to deal with a Zack Knight match. Oh, it fuck. was great. That was terrible. That was so bad. Oh <laughs> right, we're gonna fight about this. I, I have actually never seen him, despite being English. Right, I've never oh, seen no. him, oh, and I've hated so the whole build up. I've hated every moment of the build up. I thought he looked awful. Then the match happened, and I was like, "This is brilliant." I loved it. Loved Wait, it. Which match? It was Zack Knight versus um Cool Hand? Oh, wow. and Ange. And he just it destroyed him. Bad. It was bad. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, so Shreya's time. brother. It was a waste of time. <laughs> no, you're you're wrong. I'm right. He's great. <laughs> I've changed my mind on him totally in one match. Here, here's the thing. We're gonna have another argument in a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have another argument in a minute. <laughs> Here, here's the other thing with Zach Zodiac. I see him making Zach Knight, a run Zach for Knight, Roderick Zach, Strong. Zach Knight, uh, who is on um, who is on AW. But oh, yeah. still, I I see him making a run against Roderick Strong for a belt. I really do. Oh. That'd be interesting. Hmm. You hate or just create a new one because that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. we need to get rid of one as it is. Don't create a new one. Speaking of arguing, we just get let's get rid of ROH first, <laughs> and then maybe get rid of three AEW. Oh, no, 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 for the sake of the argument, yes, yes, I do. No, 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 no. Yes. I'm asking that a question. I know John yes. watches everything. I'm asking him. Instead, you watch Ring of Honor. Yes. When? After a couple of days, we're in the the release. You know, the video comes out. Yeah. You pay for Ring of Honor. When, for- when, when he gets the email that the show happens. I'm asking you, later. you pay for Ring of Honor on the ROH World. Um. You pay for the streaming service. I know. I like to take the, I I like to take the fifth. I, nah. I think it was a serious question. Do you pay for the premium? Yes. Or... Don't say anything that could, you know, harm your defense. Um, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> okay. I've never, possibly. I've never seen you watch Ring of Honor. That's why I'm dead serious asking this question. <laughs> because, like, I have not watched Ring of Honor since the second week. This is the first year ever I did not watch Super Card of Honor. This is the first time ever. So, like. But, well, I you say I watch everything. I don't watch Ring of Honor. I would. But I already in the you know I have to pay for AEW here, which I was fine with. But you don't get Ring of Honor with it. If Ring of Honor was included with it, I would watch it. Oh, I'm not yeah. paying another I fee. <laughs> but um, if, if they had decided yeah. Ring of Honor now and like Mark Briscoe was the final champion and stuff like that, I'd be 100 percent on board for that. I'd be 100 percent on board for that. Mm-hmm. But um, oh, I, by the way, I, I appreciate them putting Athena on Battle of the Belts this week for the first time ever. Her champion, but not explaining anything about her character. Like, well, that I was the thing. What... It was a really good match, no, no, but the at the same time, good. I was the just like, good. "The match was good, but it didn't explain anything." It, didn't explain yeah. anything. it was a typical AEW move where they explained nothing. They didn't explain <laughs> what opinions were. They explained nothing well, was going on yeah. at all. <laughs> they wanted to do what you do. Then again, if, if, it, if it's a quarter, how late that damn match happened on freaking Night Battle of the on Saturday night, you better be a fan of watching this damn match because it was late. Well, <laughs> when, when, when Billy Starks was out with her, they didn't basically talk about the minions till like ha- halfway well, in the no, match. No, they did earlier in the show, but the problem, they didn't play with that match. They didn't play with that match at all. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I'm screaming in reality. We haven't even gotten to what I wanted to argue about. Uh, uh, okay. So, this past Wednesday, we were joking about it on the last show. We were joking mm-hmm. about it on the last show, but obviously we record our show on Wednesday, so it would be for Dynamite. By the way, note for Dynasty preview, as always, we record on Wednesdays. 
Um, so we don't have the other like 18 matches that'll be on the show. <laughs> um, we only have eight of the matches. We don't have the other 18, but um, they'll probably be announced on Dynamite. And so anyway, this past Wednesday, they played the footage on Dynamite of the CM Punk Jack Perry backstage fight. I put quotation marks up there because it was crap. Um, so me and John have literally had an argument since last week, <laughs> last Monday, the <laughs> week. John, when CM Punk was on her Hawaii show, we talked about this on the last show. Yeah, and CM Punk went on there and talked shit about AEW like you do, and pretty much said that um, Tony Khan is not a boss. He is, um, and he and the company is not trying to make money. Um, because that's all CM Punk cares about these days, apparently. He's money. I'll get to that. I'll he's, get to that he's as punk done. as, like, oh, no. Hey, I'm done. Done. I'll get that in a second. Trust me. We'll get there. We'll get there. I, I, I actually, I'll get there. But the other <laughs> thing we talked about was the backstage brawl. As much as you can talk about it, apparently, because apparently nobody could talk about anything else after what we started in that video because of the NDA. The Tony Khan made everyone sign NDAs, so they're not allowed to talk about the like, brawl out and all that kind of stuff. Then I'll talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, Makes so, sense. Yeah. Make up they confirm that. That is, he was honest about that. That's 100% true. Mm-hmm. That they can't talk about it. Um, by the way, Kenny Omega, can I just say something? The only thing he can talk about is that um, him and Punk are still friends because Kenny Omega did not give a fuck about the fight. He wanted to make sure Punk's dog was okay. I <laughs> love that because that was rumored at the time, if you remember. But, yeah, but now we know for that. sure. <laughs> yeah, like I love the fact that Kenny did not give a shit about anything about the Bucks or this fight. He made sure the yeah. dog was out of the way. Yeah. And that, and then yeah. Punk has more respect for him for that. Yeah. <laughs> and they know what? Why? Who respect the Kenny Omega for that? Who respect? <laughs> so, wasn't the, the rumor that the dog bit? I don't know anything about that. He that did. was <laughs> one rumor. They can't at the talk time about it. That. They can't talk about it. So, like, I don't know. That's not something they can talk about. But anyway. Okay. So we have to put the video um, of Punk getting into Jack Perry's head palm, and there was no sound because this apparently was the official footage from Wembley. Yeah, um, I don't think they have sound on. They don't no, usually. They don't. And for those who are confused by this, because there's a lot of confusion what this was, um, as I joked around with joked around with Sal and I joked around with you, John, that we have not WWE. Where I think it's um I think Punk actually made a joke about this on her on his show that he wasn't used to WWE having cameras everywhere. And show like <laughs> everything for an eventual documentary down the road, maybe, or for like online something. Like he didn't wasn't expecting any of that when he yeah. came on the show. So like it's fine. If you're not used to it, I understand being completely confused by that. But um but AEW doesn't do that. So the footage we store was from Wembley Stadium because they film everything on Wembley Stadium for security reasons, it completely makes sense. So I understand that completely. So the footage we store was what we saw. A punk getting into a space. We didn't hear anything that was said. And then we see punk um push him. And then we have um, and he gets put he puts him in the guillotine, and then the fight gets broken up, and somebody with Joe pulls him away, and then you see Perry, and then you see Jack and CM Punk jump out, out of the frame like a cartoon character. <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently he punched at Tony Khan and knocked it over. That and that's what TK was threatened for his life. Um, the punk jumped out of the frame like a punk. It was actually really funny if you watch the video back and so much, it's very funny because you have this argument. You have Joe coming in like a fucking white knight, which absolutely yeah, certain. Joe was Chris the Hero. man. Then you have Chris Hero walking around like a Ooh, like I'm trying to make a meme. Ooh. And then you have Punk jump out of the crowd like a cartoon character. Absolutely hysterical when you watch Chris it. Hero made me laugh so much. He looked like he was going, Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> so funny. So funny. But um, like a plant. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. But <laughs> Apparently, what we didn't, it was so huge. So, apparently, AW pulled it, but it put a, put some strike down where you can't post this footage up anywhere anymore. You're not allowed to put this footage up anywhere. And... I don't see a problem with that personally because what they want, I'm not saying it's right, but what they want you to do is go and watch it on their show. The problem is they cut it out. They cut it out <laughs> of their own They show. haven't here. <laughs> they have here. They haven't hit the country. <laughs> People have tried. They've tried. They went really? back. It's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Right. Okay, that's weird. That's okay. weird. So, this is, is there still <clears throat> a legal issue surrounding well, this whole thing? So what happened with Ariel? So on Ariel Hawani show, Punk pretty much went blow by blow. What happened in this thing? Much you could talk about. Much he's allowed to talk about. And Ariel Hawani, being the white ass that he is, put a video up of Punk blow doing blow by blow. Exactly what we saw in the backstage video. They show it on Dynamite. Like, frame for frame. Exactly what happened. Except, obviously, the dialogue. And I'm sorry. If anything Punk said is true, and a human being went to my face when I'm already angry, I don't care what the reason is. I don't think Punk's in the right here. I don't. I honestly don't. But if Punk's in the, I don't care if Punk's in the right or Perry's in the right. I don't give a fuck. I'm a neutral. 
when it comes to that part of it. I'm neutral. But if someone gets in my face, and I have a temper, these guys know that I have a temper. And if someone gets into my face, and I'm trying to get in their thing, and they literally say to me, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I'm going to hit them. I'm sorry. That's just how it's going to be. When you say it, when anyone says that particularly, and when what you if he, if, it, if Perry it, said that, it, I believe that. I believe Perry said that. It's a so. challenge. It's a challenge thrown out there to see what you're going to do next. And if you don't do anything next, then you're a punk ass bitch. Yeah. So I, I, so, but he's meant to be right. His words, he was given sort of pa- some form of power, right? Was he was he was putting yeah. in a collision, and he was actually so, giving two, he was actually getting two paychecks from AEW at one point. Exactly. So even more so than just a normal colleague, he's meant to be like a manager. A, a, I don't care a, what your line of work is. You're meant to be above that. You're like no, no. Out of anyone, the guy in charge doesn't go I around slapping people. I don't condone it. I don't condone it. I'm not condoning it. I'm just. Looking at it from both perspectives here. Let's try to look at it from both perspectives. Apparently, this was not a one-time deal. Apparently, Perry was pissing everybody off. This yeah, been... that's the thing. He could have been like the most. He could have been a big jerk. Like, to me, that's irrelevant. I actually, he, you know, it, it, it depends. It really depends. And my other theory goes back to All In. I don't, I don't remember who was on the show after All In. I don't remember anymore because everything that that weird like three weeks span at the end of the summer was weird. So I don't remember who was on the show that week. I don't know if Sal was here. Or not. I don't remember. I know you were here, John. I don't remember if Sal was here. But I would have said, <laughs> I feel like Punk intentionally got himself fired. Like, yeah, I, no, I agree. Yeah. I am convinced that this day he intentionally got himself. No, Sal wasn't here because we did a Thursday show because we wanted to have the Aftermath for Dynamite. So Sal was not here that week. It was right. a Thursday show. Um, but, but that would make sense because, I mean, he had already been spotted like going to WWE, hadn't he, before that? He didn't get like go. He walked off. And that was a Vince issue. That was a Vince issue. It's very like Sasha. No. Not like Sasha. For a Vince picked her off, she walked off. Same as that kind of situation. No. <laughs> you know? But, um... I think he was planning it. Because he went to visit people backstage. Like, Okay, so I, I, I love the story of that, by the way. I was going to the story. So apparently, um, he was flying home. And Liv Morgan, of all people, was sitting next to him. And they started chit-chatting. Mm. And he really he dropped Liv Morgan. And he dropped his headphones, and Liv helped him find her headphones, his headphones, before she got off the plane. And so he started talking, and then they, he walked out with Liv, and Bailey invited Punk backstage. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and, I oh, shit. Shit. and Bailey confirmed that. Bailey confirmed that. But he, and, <laughs> and he should know that when, when you're already, you know, kind of on thin ice, that might not be the best idea. <laughs> but so, that was also, if I remember, when Punk and Paul had a conversation. That was that was the night that they finally talked for the first time. Right. Uh, Vince was not there. Right. Vince was home. That was when Vince was doing stuff from home before he left the company officially. Right. And like this is that weird like middle ground period where Chip right. was in charge, but Vince is calling in shit from home. That was that weird like yeah. period when we were dealing with that weird shit and like. What a weird year it was, but that was a strange, <laughs> strange year. And, and, when, you put, you know, when you start thinking about it, that was a really strange year. Like, <laughs> strange year. And, and my understanding is that they were waiting to see what was going to happen with Punk at EW, and depending on so, what's happening. But what I'm understanding, this came from various places. Nick Khan did not realize that Punk did not have a no compete. Apparently, Punk did not have a no compete. He could have showed up in a, on WWE television the next day after All In. He could have showed up on the Raw after All In. That's probably because sorry, the Raw after all it, out. he was sorry, the Raw after fired, all out. wasn't the it? Raw after All Out. Mm. Um, sorry, All Out. Sorry, but um, but apparently they assumed because anyone that gets released from WWE or fired from WWE, no matter who it is, no matter what circumstances, there's always a no compete of some sort, whether it be thirty days, ninety days, or in like right. that's Kim Casey here. Like, there's always something that they assumed. There was a no compete, so they didn't bother to contact him. Why would you? I understand. From that perspective, I get it. I fully understand their perspective. You know? And then they reached out to him, like, well, if I was here, is going to be at Chicago. Let's reach out to Punk. You know? So, like, I understood that logic. You know? So, that's where we are now. But here's my problem. What exactly was the point of airing? Oh, you're right. You- you're right. There wasn't much of a um, point. Like, because my thinking was, oh, they're going to show it, so it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be worse than he said, not that it was fine anyway, because it was terrible. 
But it, I thought if they're showing it, it's either going to be worse or it's going to be a jokey skit. And it wasn't. It was, was literally thinking. just. It was literally just what he said, which, which again was bad. But then why are you wasting TV time with it? Just put it on. That's Twitter. my point. That had been my point this entire time. What was the point? And they're trying to tie it in. But they're trying to didn't tie it in FDR. Like it made no sense. So, so from what I'm understanding, Punk and Perry getting into an argument backstage, like athletes do. I'm not again not condoning it, but it happened with athletes in every other sports league. It happens all over the place all the time. The Kenny Omega, it's coming from Kenny Omega himself. He even said, happened to every other sport. You know? Two guys getting into argument, and, and the Bucks were not even in the frame in the video we watched. And apparently, according to the storyline, this distracted them from having their pre match prayer so they lost <laughs> FTR. That is the reason they lost FTR, because they didn't get around to their pre match prayer because of CM Punk. Yeah. I got the I That is the stupid thing I ever heard. Okay, okay. Time out. Time out. Okay. You have a disagreement between two employees that basically can't get along. Number one, you separate them and you make sure that they don't have any more inner <laughs> contact. So my thing is with this video, okay, there's no neither one of them work for the company anymore. Oh no, no, no. Jack Perry does. Jack he Perry definitely does. does yeah. Jack Perry still works there. Don't don't fall for storylines. Jack Perry works there. We'll get to trust me. I have Jack Perry thoughts. We get to the hate review in a few minutes. I have thoughts. Yeah. I have thoughts with Jack Perry a little bit, but um, yeah. Jack Perry still works there. I will. This is my moment. I will praise Jack Perry. I'm gonna praise the fuck out of Jack Perry right now. New Japan, Windy City Riot. This yes. man. Right after all this happened on Wednesday. The pay per view is on Friday. It's <laughs> on Friday. You knew he was getting heat anyway. He's been a really good heel in Japan. He's part of the House of Torture for some reason. And um, hate that faction, but whatever. I'm in the House of Torture. And um, he's going to be, he, he's a fantastic heel. Did not know he had it in him. I honestly did not know he had this in him. That was a star making fucking entrance, if I've ever yeah. seen one. He comes out, he, he before his music hits, security comes out. They had a freaking security with the fucking, <laughs> like, full out, like, Chicago's, because he, he hires security to deal with the fans during his entrance. I thought that was brilliant. Number one, heel heat. That was great. Good. Comes out wearing a jacket that says Cry Me a River on the back <laughs> to set the crowd off anyway. And then kneels on the ground like punk going to the entrance. And I'm like, oh shit. Nobody gets in the ring. The crowd is livid. They're pissed. They're cursing. They're yelling and screaming. And he gets on the freaking, he gets in the ring and he stands on the top rope. Puts his arm out and just soaks it in. I'm yeah. like, holy fuck, where did this come from? Where did this Perry come from? Like, it was amazing to watch him play heel. Like, I was like, holy hell. And you know, he's facing Umino, who's like one of the top baby faces in the company. Like, this was amazing to watch. The match was great. I have no I'm, idea where Perry got this, but I loved every second of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that Perry's. If you want to call it confidence. Oh, I forgot. By the way, I that. forgot that during the match, he um, you know that you know that um, the the um, that the, the top the top rope like buckle bomb that that um, that uh, buckle bomb the um, I forgot what it's fucking called that punk hits me with the TTS on the top rope where he jumps on the top rope and he spreads it like I can't think of the name right now. My buckle buster, buckle buster that punk does. Okay, got yeah, it. And he posed in the, and on the ropes to the crowd, booing the hell out of him doing this move. And then he gets into the ring and teases the DTS. He does this <laughs> in front of the crowd, picks up Umino for the DTS and starts marching around the ring with Umino on his back. <laughs> He's in the DTS and Umino countered out the DTS to a massive pop. Like, it was like, holy shit, this is so well done. <laughs> God damn. You, know, you know what really surprised me? And I'm someone who, of course, I've been defending Jack Perry, but I was surprised how many people by the end of it all it was a mixed crowd by the end. It was mixed. Were mixed. He, got, he was getting a lot of support. I really there was enjoyed a, it. There was I an really FCM it. Punk chant at one point in Chicago. Uh -huh. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible to watch. I'm, it's such a great TV. Great I'm TV. guessing whoever is he's working with in New Japan has given this new type of confidence that shows he's able to do this. And the way, and it, the way it ended, it sounds like that might be his last match in New Japan. And again, I'll we'll do it in a minute. But it sounds like that uh -huh. was his last match because he shook. He actually raised Umino's hand. Mm -hmm. And left the ring after it was over, and I, him and have been they've been rivaling his de Perry debut. Like literally, Perry debuted attacking Shimano. So like this is his like this is Shimano's revenge match. So like, it was a big deal. 
I think this is the change that Tony kind of wanted to see, but didn't happen right away. So, I guess we'll talk more about that. Um, Sal, any opinion on any of this? Because we've been going back and forth, and you've been trying to jump in, but like we've been going back and forth. <laughs> any opinion on any of this? Uh, no. Um, I, so, I... At first, I was like, yeah, let's see the footage. We're going to prove who's right. I was so excited. And then it came out, and I was like, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> it like, felt weird, like you were intruding. It, it, did feel a little, it felt a little weird. I texted Blink, and I'm like, wow, they actually showed it. By the way, so we were watching it on delay. So what happened was that night, nice. South City wasn't watching Dynamite Live. So me and Mandy were running late, and we did our workout later in the night than normal. And so we started the show like 20 minutes late. And we were going to usually catch up by the time we get to like after the show. The problem is they did this in like the third segment. So like we didn't get there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> texting me, they're showing the footage. I'm like, what? They're actually showing the footage. <laughs> <laughs> I was under the impression that they were going to be like, oh, someone stole the tape, or oh, someone <laughs> deleted the file off the computer, or, you know, just some shtick that you know to get ratings or whatever. So they actually showed it. It was a little awkward. The silence made it awkward. Uh, yeah. Tony Schiavone's reaction after it aired was awkward. <laughs> it was just the whole thing was just unnecessary. Um, um, who did it help? It helped CM Punk because he was trending on Twitter X, whatever. <laughs> um, the the memes about um, on the run sheet of of the Dynamite episode, and it said, uh, you know, uh, CM Punk defeated Jack Perry backstage <laughs> as an actual yeah, match forced, of the show. Forrest put that up. Put that up. I thought that was <laughs> That was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, after seeing it, witnessing it, living it, whatever, I think it was a really bad move. It really was. I think that was a bonehead move. It was a bad move. It shouldn't have happened. And I really think somebody should have stepped up. I can guarantee there were a lot of people backstage that thought it was a bad idea. Somebody should have said, stepped up to TK and said, I don't think this is a good idea. So, from what I've heard, this came from Wade Keller, because he was reporting it live, and then he had to actually go on and say, this is actually what I said, people. This is not what you heard. This is actually what I said. <laughs> um, apparently, the Bucks did not want to do it okay, originally. They did not want anything to do with this. They didn't want to touch it. They didn't want to talk about this. But it's a bad situation for them, too. You got to admit, it's a very bad situation for them. Mm-hmm. The of this company. Um, PK convinced them to do it. And a lot of people were behind it. And by the way, so that by the way, the video of Tony Giovanni um looking at um, putting his head down in the shame and all that kind of stuff that was like, this is what it was in WCW. Apparently Shivani goes on his podcast and says, What are you guys talking about? I was just reacting at characters of the Bucks as in character. Like, I can't believe we're doing this. And he was reacting to the Bucks. I had nothing to do with the company. Well, <laughs> that's the only thing, right? Yeah. That's the only thing I don't get. The thing that confuses me about it, right? Because, I, you know, I, you've heard me. I don't mind. Whatever. But I don't really understand how... Because I got the impression that the Bucks maybe said to Tony, okay, right, if you're going to insist on doing it, give it to us and we'll do something with it. That seemed to be the impression I got. Like, we'll make it work somehow. Apparently, TK convinced them and FTR to do this as part of the storyline, which is a stupid way of tying into the storyline. By the way, you can very, feel very, it. very thin line to get there. <laughs> well, that that ties in actually to where I'm going because the thing that confuses me is so if they're presenting the footage, presumably AEW are the face. And CM Punk is the heel, right? Lovely. <laughs> so you're giving it to the Young Bucks to introduce, who are heels. As heels. Uh, and they're in a feud with FTR, who are faces, but they're representing CM Punk in this situation in a way. Yeah. So I'm a bit like, well, who are we, who are we rooting for? I'm a bit confused. 100% right, John. You're 100% right. You're not even like, I'm happy with you. You're 100% right about that. John, <laughs> I'm sure you're not the only one is. <laughs> like, are we are we cheering the books? <laughs> like, what? It is so confusing. And then it, it, the boys in the water too. Well, more confusing. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> here's the thing that I'm thinking that TK looks at it this way. Well, you fans want clarity. Here's clarity. This is what we got. There was no clarity. The That's the problem. There was no clarity. You oh. make the decision. There was always this drama surrounding it that it was. And here's the thing. To me, I think. 
they made a bigger thing out of it than it was and all this drama crap. And I think TK let it go to a point where, you know, what happened? Did something happen? The wedding, like building up on this. And he did it purposely. Why? Because he'd think it would generate more interest for what? I don't know. Pay per view. He said the pay per view, which we'll get to in a couple of seconds. For me, the pay per view, I have one more thing I want to address. It has to do with the main event of the show that I'm really excited for Osprey and Danielson. Hey. What the fuck was Osprey doing at, on the same dynamite that we had the whole punk thing? Why the blue hell? But he go in there right after WrestleMania, right after Paul Levesque is like showing everybody that WWE the best has been in years. People are signing with Paul Levesque more than ever before, and goes out there and drops a freaking twenty year old joke about about him grinding on the fucking daughter's of the of the of the, of the owner's daughter line on Dynamite for no reason. Like it made no sense. No, because because. Triple H. No, he didn't. He no, he, didn't. he meant him. Everyone knows he meant him. Okay, no. Okay, <laughs> I watched that live. Okay, I'm, to explain what happened on the Pat McAfee show. Okay. By the way, the, I remember last week I was playing the Pat McAfee show. The little bit I did watch because after I had enough and enough of that show, the yeah. little bit I did watch was Triple H's thing, and I watched that whole thing. He said that he doesn't want people on this roster that don't want to have the daily grind or the weekly grind, and which is fine. Fine. Yeah. Here's what I thought when I was watching it. This is my personal opinion. I thought he was talking about Mercedes. Oh, Mercedes. no. See, I, I didn't. Thought, I thought he was talking about Mercedes. And the crowd started chanting MJF. So the crowd thought he was talking about MJF. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if you're watching it live, actually watching it live, not on video clips, not on, like, who oh, you should have about Will Ospreay, like a lot of people did, you, I don't, I, no, I wasn't even on my mind. He wasn't even close to my mind watching. But it. maybe he knows from people that that's who, you know. I, I don't know because like, my other issue here, my other issue is Triple H says this on the Pat McAfee show. Um, CM Punk says his shit on Hiro Hawani's show. Yeah. That both of them get addressed on Dynamite. <laughs> that's the problem, is giving like, time to it. be on the show. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand it. Like, you really wanted to put it out there, freaking go on Boston Open. Yeah. And go on Boston Open and do it over there. Because you have the connection with Boston Open, TK. Go over there and do it over there. Like, why are you wasting your TV time with this shit? Like, I don't understand. You're, you're settling grudges outside of the company on your managed television show. It would make no sense to me. Just have, like, a YouTube show of your own and put stuff like that on there if you want. Go on an RJ City show or something. Like, go on RJ yeah, City. yeah. And then he could My at least make is, it, like, funny. I'm not saying... I, I'm not saying... I'm saying go, I wouldn't watch it, but then go go over there and do it. I'm going to jump it on Twitter and see people's reaction to it. Wouldn't this be something to base the second season of All Access on? You know what? Right now, you should worry about your actual show before you worry about your new season to be a reality show that most people didn't watch anyway. I well, mean, to be fair, that that's the only thing I didn't watch because we couldn't get I it. I watched it. I watched it. It was all right for a reality show. Stake it was not a bad show at all. But it, by the end of it all, it was just, hey, look, Adam Cole's injury is coming back. I was going to turn uh, it to by the end. <laughs> I, so, I mean, that, that video would have been a perfect spot for something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. If legally, they're allowed to do it. I don't even know how that would have worked. Because remember, they skipped over it all. They skipped over Brawl Out on that show. They skipped over it because they couldn't talk about it. So I guarantee they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be able to talk about it all in on that show. Well, the skipped over brawl. I remember, remember the Bucks just disappeared for some reason, and then the, the Bucks and Kenny disappeared and then reappeared in time to be at full gear. <laughs> remember that on that, that is a storyline on last well, well, they some reason they disappeared and then came back right in time for full gear. <laughs> well, remember, that's because you, know. you can't miss your cue for entrance. Oh, that was bad. So, all right, look at the hate review. Look at the hate review now. We have eight matches. Like I said, Dynamite tonight. Um, they'll probably add another like eighteen, but including pre-show matches and stuff we're not gonna, we don't give a fuck about and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that. Don't it's forget the new title they're going to debut. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> so it one two the three, dynasty three, title. It was one two. <laughs> don't three, tempt them. We have eight matches. We have eight matches, and one two three four five of them are title matches. <laughs> It's like a new Japan show. It's like a new Japan show. <laughs> well, this is the thing I said last time I was on the show. I I see it as a spin-off of New Japan, so I'm go. fine with it in principle. But is. the titles need a purpose. There it the, is. The Continental and the Intercontinental. 
the, the international. It's stupid. I, I've been international. Thank you. I've been international. But I put, I put international, and then my autocorrect went to international because I'm saying yeah. WWE stuff. Let me fix that. Thank you for basically correcting me on that. My autocorrect. I, I don't care if I'm repeating myself. What's the difference between the two? <laughs> Combine them. By the way, so I actually was talking to somebody. The universal intercanal? <laughs> I wanted to just throw something out there because. Go ahead. Um, the conversation I have with some other friend. I, I, my phone, by the way, has been more active about wrestling talk not on this podcast than ever before. Ever before. <laughs> like, I've never had this many conversations about wrestling with people that I don't normally talk about wrestling. It's actually been a lot of fun recently. But what the hell is that doing? <laughs> not doing. I'll, 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 I'll read that joke when we get there. Trust me, I'll read it. <laughs> um, so a lot of people were like, they don't watch AEW because they get bored watching it because it's just wrestling. And I know it's gone. Your argument. For a year. We've literally been having this argument for a year. Your argument has been, and we haven't brought it on the show because I keep forgetting to, and this just reminded me of forgetting <laughs> on the show. Your argument has been that it's in New Japan, um, even though the fan base is there. My yeah. problem here, the difference between New Japan and AEW in this country, New Japan in this country is not survived on ratings. And I know it doesn't matter to you in the UK because you're paying for the show. But in America, in this country, the ratings matter. And the problem <laughs> having is, oh, it does matter here. And they can cancel the show. They're not signed to an extension yet. They can cancel the show. And they will. They've done it before. I see it. Possible. We've it's seen possible. it happen. We've seen it happen. So if they don't do something to help their fucking cause, they're not going to have a fucking renewal. They're not going to have a renewal. So that's the problem we're having here. Like, the ratings are going down. Like, the fucking punk video dumped up the ratings two percent and then went down after adam copeland was off the show like huh. that was it like that's it like it's it's weird but like no one's really no one knew was watching the show and that's a problem no i don't think they'll really attract new people to that's be honest it's not for, it's, it's for people like me that's who weren't problem, watching though. wwe you know that's the problem though that's the problem john they should be attracting new people that's the I problem have, i have a question regarding is if you're trying to up the ratings and you're that means you're trying to get like advertising sponsors to help your show and the ratings go down, then that would I mean go that, away. Yeah. The, the, I noticed that, I've, I've noticed it on Dynamite. Would... I've noticed it on Dynamite that it's the same fucking show. Like it, I know compare I'm not comparing WWE because WWE is a whole different planet right now. They're on a whole different planet right now. Oh, yeah. They fucking have men warehouse advertisements on Raw this week. So I'm not even gonna promote I'm not even gonna compare. Uh, but, yeah, I mean they're they're a whole separate separate thing. they had a match fucking sponsored by men's warehouse this week. So like, <laughs> I'm not gonna compare. Um so this that's messing with the red sheet now. Um, <laughs> but um the whole thing is like I I I am just saying like it's the same thing all the time. I'm like, what is happening here? Like I'm gonna say Sal, Sal, I'm gonna ask Sal. Sal is the most casual one on this show when it comes to wrestling. Out of the four of us, you are the most casual. Before this, especially before this podcast, especially before we started doing this show. If you didn't know me, if we weren't close friends, if we didn't do this show, would you know who Okada, Jay White, or Will Ospreay were? Absolutely not. And that's the problem. But the difficulty oh. is they can't. How how do you change this right? Because it's to appeal to people like me, right? Is it so? If, if AEW went, but that's why they created it. That's why they created it. Well, so if it went away, right? I'm not suddenly like, oh, well, I'll watch WWE. It's like, well, no, I'll watch New Japan then, because that's where no, I came from. That, that I was watching well. New Japan, and then my favorite New Japan wrestlers were like, we're making our own promotion. So, oh, cool, I'll watch your new promotion then. And that's but the problem is that's you. <laughs> that's you and around here. I know a lot of people that watch AEW. That watched it when it started. They're excited. They've watched it. And now a year later, they're not watching it anymore. Two years later, they're not watching it anymore. But they're more. Or it's I mean, I've definitely down downscaled my AEW. He's got over here with an AEW mark when the damn show started. <laughs> and he's skipping dynamites on a woman on a bi weekly basis at this point. So I, <laughs> I, I I think with the Forbidden Door program. Is it introduced you to wrestlers from New Japan? But that should have been a one-time only thing, but, by the way. But in reality, it was Tony Khan who was looking at these guys going, hmm, 
Let's see what I can do when their contracts are up. Let me entice them to come to my organization and my company because people <laughs> yeah. have already seen them wrestle on my show. So I want to basically bring this person here and wrestle full time and get the same type of results as that person was working for New Japan. And I, I feel like we have time to figure out what to do with Okada. Okada is a hard one if you don't follow him. You really need to do it right with Okada. Fine. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Osprey is so easy. He is so simple to promote. He is so simple to promote. Easy as fucking hell to promote. He's in the main event against somebody everybody knows. Like everybody knows Brian Danielson. Everybody well, knows who he is. Like every Even I'm him. amazed how well the Osprey thing's gone though. That was like I, I yeah, didn't expect like, people Daniel, to get on board. You're in front so of the AW crowd, though. You're in front of an AW crowd. The thing is, I don't know many like I know a lot of people that know Brian Danielson. Because, not because WWE, not even because of because of fucking Total Bellas. People know who he is. People know Brian Daniels. He's a household name. He's, from, he's against Will, Will Ospreay. How is this not promoted everywhere? Why is this not in buy ads on fucking E? Like, why did they do that? To promote it everywhere? Then the, the buy rate would have been so much higher if they did that. Like, the little things like that. I'm not saying be WWE and be family friendly. I'm not saying that at all. Whatsoever. I'm not saying that because that wouldn't be fair to have been TNA the first time. Well, it, yeah, it would be pointless, wouldn't it? Because TNA mean? saw exactly how bad an exactly. idea that was. Now TNA right now is actually good. The old TNA that they're trying to do, they tried to be WWE light. I'm not saying do that at all. But I'm saying you got a multi, you have a fucking billionaire as your owner, pay for some fucking promotion. Promote <laughs> shit out of, all outside of watching Big Bang Theory and seeing commercials. I, and maybe with the NHL games, I don't see promotion anywhere. That this. is a fair so. point, because obviously I don't see this here, but from people I speak to online, they often don't even know that the shows come into their town until like a couple of days before and they're like oh true. uh i didn't know <laughs> exactly it's true that's why the that's why the attendance is so shitty the attendance is so bad like it's terrible how bad the attendance is right now it's really well, bad it's, it's actually the, the, it's the way they, AEW does their press junkets when they go on tour uh, it, 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 there is no emphasis on it it's like okay we come to your town we basically go to the local news stations blah 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 if There's you're no coming to Milwaukee, my whole thing is they came around. They did for the for like Sting's retirement, for that retirement show. That was the most promotion that I've ever seen AEW do for anything. The problem is it was Sting. That's the only <laughs> problem with this. Look, it was Sting last so, match. Like that was so, the most I've ever seen them do. <laughs> then why can't you do this? And it worked. Promotion. <laughs> it did. It did work. That's the point, though. They can yeah. do it. They just don't. <laughs> They can't do it. Then, then, then why don't you have this much emphasis on your promotion to build up your other talent and your shows coming from town to town? Like, for instance, they, if they come to Milwaukee, that's time they come, they haven't announced the next show from Milwaukee yet. If they come to Milwaukee and they come in the summer, they should be doing something with the Brewers. They yeah. Be with the Brewers. If you're coming in the fall, you should be doing something with the Bucks. Like, WWE did stuff with the Bucks. Right. They were here. Right, we're not advertising. But they just stole something new. Fucking Danny and Priest hanging out with the fucking Yankees, or <laughs> or hanging out with the Yankees, <laughs> or, or or you know, they usually have the show at the Panther Arena. Right. Why don't you do something like with the, the Packers Admirals. or the Admirals at, or, the, or Admirals. the Packers off season because they're not doing anything right now? Exactly. Or like you know? or, the, or like the Admirals in the waiver, the freaking home building, well, or the fucking um, what the hell is the school that goes there? Look, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm the University of Milwaukee. Like, you're on a fucking, you're in a building with a college campus, probably. <laughs> like, take so, advantage of it. Like, remember the one show that we went to and Giannis came out? That was WWE. That was WWE. No, 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 oh, no, 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 Right, no where you are. I don't know how much the big deal it is for you, John, but in this country, Giannis, uh, out to Pombo is a massive deal here. Mm. And at the time, the Bucks had just won the world champion, won the NBA championship. So, like, yeah. that was a very big deal at the time. And and, and uh, now the Bucks are getting ready for the playoffs. And, 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 you're hurt. Gonna and, a, and you're gonna have a show coming to Milwaukee if they are, if they, well, they don't have a show yet, but if they did, you know. But I'm just saying, we can do so much more than they're doing. 
maybe right. this is the solution then to just get get yeah. some better promoters to help out with that. Like again, with the thing it worked. Like Sal said, it worked. That was the most I've ever seen. Like that was amazing. <laughs> what they did for that. Like it's I'm sorry, this is just a rant yeah. thing in my system for weeks so that we haven't had yet to talk about it because we're WWE centric for the last yeah. month. <laughs> <laughs> centric for the last month. I don't know who's doing their advertising or their marketing, but whoever it is really sucks. So all right, let's get to the show. We have a pay-per-view. Um Let's start from the bottom to the top. I don't know. I don't know. If you didn't watch Collision, this match makes no sense. Um, <laughs> it is the AEW. Oh, thank you, Sal. This, thank you, Sal, for this one. This is very. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck? Is this our truth? Is our truth? No, what is this? <laughs> the AEW International European 7 Eleven I 95 Wawa Championship. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Strong defending against Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> or at or as um as, as Jason Powell called it the highly coveted AEW International, International, International Championship. Um well, I, so if you didn't watch collision, most people did not. Um no, no offense, John. Most people did not watch collision for me. <laughs> or, or, watch, or, or watch it sober. Um, um Roderick Strong uh, officially turned on Carl O'Reilly. Why? I don't know. <laughs> why? Yeah, I'm a bit I confused. Show, I can tell you why. Tell you because did they need another member in the Innisfree Kingdom? That's the problem. He wouldn't join the Kingdom. I think I probably went away. Maybe, yeah, maybe I, th- I think that's what it's meant to be. It's that he he rejected them to go his own way. So we're having this match because all we all wanted was another Roger Strong Kyle O'Reilly match. So here we are. Um, Don, go ahead. I mean, it'll, it'll be a good match. It's just it's also a bit throwaway. It's like, oh yeah, I mean, you know, it's gonna they're gonna deliver, but you're not gonna be like, wow, like oh my god, you know. So I suppose if you like yeah. kick off the card with something like this, that, that that's fine, isn't it? And um, Roderick needs to defend that title. You know, he needs to do something with it. So why not? Why not? Might as well give him something like this. He's not going to lose it. Yeah, there's no way that Roddy no. loses it, Sal. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't see a title change. Yeah. No, I what I do see is a lot of outside interference coming in that's going to mm. cost kyle to lose um but my thing is do we see an appearance from adam cole baby no, on this I, pay-per-view no uh, maybe he'll be sitting in that chair still in the back telling stories that's all happened <laughs> then, 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 then he'll be stories. calling Roddy. Oh, that, that's not gonna happen that ain't gonna happen um yeah I'll well get, actually i'll get to that bit here i like, no, i don't feel like it now i don't feel like it <laughs> but uh the, the thing with obviously i'm so glad to see kyle back i've always loved him loved him for ages um, but is it just me or does he? It, what's this Damn thing? Off. He, he looks, to, yeah, he's off and he's given like a weird vibe. Where maybe it's a character. The character, let's say, looks depressed. He's he giving off miserable. like I think that, I think that okay, he, no, he's no. giving off like the nervous guy trying to get a kid to take candy and go into his van kind of vibe. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think what it is is. That's great. He's glad to be back with his friends, but he finds it hard to fit in. Maybe that's where they're going with it. Yeah, yeah. That was great, Sal. Thank you for that. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from him. He's like, he's. It's like the first time he's trying to kidnap a kid, and he's like really nervous about it. <laughs> he looks nervous. Yeah, and I don't think that's him. In, like, I think he's. It's a conscious choice, and it's like, well, what's a weird choice? Why are you doing that? You know, there are times they write that type of <laughs> clips for like Instagram or TikTok or or, or or if you subscribe to our Spotify feed, you get clips. No, that one's just for me. That one's just mine. That one's just gonna be for my personal page. <laughs> like like that that Kyle going back home and talking to his wife. I don't think I like me anymore. There are times oh. that I put clips up on my Instagram page. They're like, what the fuck is going on on your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, come on over there. <laughs> All right, um, moving on. AEW and Turk, thank, thank you, Sal, for that one. The Continental Championship or Continental uh-huh. Crown, I don't know what the fuck are calling this thing now. I, I still get, I'm still pissed at what the actual title belt to this day. Um, Kazuchi Okada, who couldn't win the Triple Crown because they don't want to put the Japan belt on him, um, versus Pac. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to this match because the match is good, and I'm happy to see Pac back. I'm not going to lie. Really excited to see him back. And this match on paper is going to be great. I have no mm. argument with that at all. Pac, Pac has no chance in hell of winning this match, though. By the way, there is one thing to throw out there. Like, there's going to be else in interference. Look, the here. They made it clear that our Continental matches are going to have the same rule they had during the um, Continental Classic. Yeah. During the T2. 
that there will be no outside interference and no seconds at ringside and all that kind of stuff. So that's good at least for keeping it. Shit. I'm sorry. Off, 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 off. No, they didn't for hey, to their credit, they've been very good about that. I hope they stick to it because it gives it a, a purpose. You know? in, the Bucks did not come out. But to their credit, like they stayed in the back, which, okay, which is hilarious and badly timed, but it did do that. You know what I mean? So that is the rules for this. But Okada has got to retain. So. Yeah, um, you're, you're, you're not going to bring in an Okada, throw him a title within the first two weeks of employment and then have him lose it so quickly. So Unless you're going to push him right to the top, but you're not going to do it. You know? <laughs> Um, Dad? I think the Bucks get involved, but what they do is they go to the ref and say, "If you count it, you're fired." The problem is number one, that's way too that's way too rock. That's way too final plus rock. And then number two, it, the stipulations of these matches were made by. What are you doing, Sal? What the fuck are you doing over there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting very distracted by Sal in the red chair right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. what are you doing? I'm renaming all the titles. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I the, I, I'm so fucking distracted right now because it sounds like over there messing with the red sheet. Oops. <laughs> I'm renaming all the titles. The conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about like, just, uh, John, take it, please. <laughs> I'm so fucking distracted right now. You <laughs> don't have ADD. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The oh, no, no, don't read it yet. 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 Okay. Don't read it yet. John, go kind of pop, go. Um, I mean, yeah, uh, has got to retain, right? Because I know it's not just because oh, he's a big name; it's because he's he's really only just won the title. So to take it off someone like him and put it on back that quickly, when the belt itself is new, it makes it look even worse, right? And we've already said how it's a bit pointless that it exists. So you've got to let someone like Okada try and do something with it. I'm not reading that now. You know, I'm not reading that. <laughs> you've got to read them all. You've got I'm to read, read it. I'm not oh, reading that. I'm not reading it. Read it. Oh, read, read it. Read it. Holy oh, fucking hell. Okay. I'm going to move on. I'm so fucking. <laughs> I have... Blake has lost track of the conversation. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question regarding. Go for it. <laughs> Is. They, are they grooming Okada to go against Joe to take the main belt. We'll get to that. We'll get there. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think so. We'll get there. I actually have an idea for Okada we, when we get there, but the title that, ironically, that title's not being defended on this show. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Irony. Okay. Um, what's the What the fuck is wrong with you, Sal? WWE <laughs> <laughs> TBS Championship. <laughs> Sal, would you like to please tell me tell people what you wrote here? I, I'll let you have this. This is actually really funny. I'll let you have this one. It, it's it's not it's not for the you know channel that. It airs in America. It is. It stands for a thick pussy slip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is house rules match, which I, I, I still don't understand what the fuck that means. Julie Hart defending against Willow Nightingale, the happiest person on the planet. Um, and the winner apparently gets to face Mercedes Monet at double or nothing, which why the fuck is she back on the show so soon? She's not going to wrestle till May. But anyway, when Fresh and she can't talk. Um, if, if this is all this is all deleting, especially because I heard Julia might be hurt. And I had Willow winning anyway. So what uh, Willow wins and we're having Willow Mercedes at double or nothing. John? Um well first of all, I'll explain what our house rules match is. Please it's very simple. There's there's like a, only a couple of components. Number one, uh there's twenty second count out for some reason. Um there's no rope breaks. And but. the challenger can pick a stipulation to go with those as well. So you could be like, well, I want it to be, I don't know, hardcore match, or I want it to be a cage match. I to do I cage matches, but you know. Um, and I'm, I don't want Julia to lose, but I, I'm thinking Willow as well, even without the injury thing in there. I think Julia's had it a little while now, and I don't know if she needs it. She's, she's over already, like, you know. Um, although I still don't understand the whole thing going on with Willow and Chris Statlander. They never explained any of that because that's an ROH thing as well. But I, you know what I like about that whole thing, though, is that they actually are like, fuck it, we're not explaining this, but we're going to have Chris like be Willow's bodyguard for some reason. Which I means, think that, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, no, we just have to go, yeah, okay. I, mean, I, like, I like it because she actually looked really badass. Uh, next to Willow, I thought that was actually really badass. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so, totally for some reason, it went from, I can't stand you, Willow, to, Willow, you're amazing. In a matter of like a week. <laughs> yeah, from out of nowhere. But I think Willow Willow's in a place where she might need the title. 
Whereas I, I don't I, think Junior I love does Bolo that. So I love Bolo so much. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to be so happy to hear celebrate. Hey, here, I, I, the funny part is about Willow, and I, I said this to Sal. It sounds like ugh, the Sal's not a happy person ever. Um, <laughs> as, <laughs> not, not fucking, fucking over here, fucking engaged son of a over here, never happy. But Willow was like the happiest man on the planet. Like, <laughs> such a such a great person. And I, yeah. Oh, Mandy, Mandy also loves her. Like Mandy's a big girl. Absolutely loves her. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love her. So, like, I'm going to be so happy if he will win this thing. Uh, yeah. uh, Mr. No Joy. <laughs> <laughs> so, no Joy Championship. Yeah, there we go. I, 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 um, the, this TBS title run has been kind of boring, especially with the whole breakdown of that whole thing with that group. I mean, it's just boring. Um, I was going to say Ju- Julia was going to retain. But the whole Mercedes Monet thing, it's a little too obvious to me now that Willow is going to win. And then Mercedes is going to try to take the title from her, just like she took the title from Mercedes in Japan. Oh, yeah. The problem with that whole logic, and I get it, it's a, stu- it's a simple, simple storyline. Willow did not even injure Mercedes. Mercedes freak injury. It's a freak injury. That's the funniest part about that injury. It's so ridiculous. Well, Mercedes is another fragile mind, fragile body situation. By the way, I was having trouble with the soundboard. See if this actually is working now. Let's see who Cell hated today. There we go. I, I, I was trying to, like, I'll try to play it like two minutes ago. I had to reset the soundboard. Okay. So, um, Dad, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going with Willow. Uh, I think they're going to put the belt on her and. This is going to cause some friction between her and Chris. Uh, and then don't be surprised if Chris turns on her and aligns herself with Mercedes. Why is Mercedes yeah. not a heel, by the way? Why is she not a heel, by the way? That's another question. Why is she not a heel? Uh, I think this would do it. I think this would basically make her a heel. By the way, if anyone turns and helps her. Uh, anyone listening um, on the on, on the podcast side, if you heard a little feedback, I had a little issue. I had to fix it. So if you any feedback, sorry about that. I'm throw that out there. I don't, I don't know if you guys heard it, but I know on the recording side, I'm recording it. They probably heard it. So if you heard that. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> had to go difficulties on my end. Um, but I'll fix that. I'll fix that. All right. Uh, let's move on. I'm not I'm not reading that, Sal. I refuse to read that. <laughs> but it's the AEW Women's Championship. Sal, yeah, you read what you wrote. I am not reading that. No. It is for the AEW Women's Go Make Me a Sandwich Championship. <laughs> and watch for the shoe. What the fuck is yes. wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? All hey, right. I had an entire 44 ounce um, thing from Sonic. I'm all hyped up. Damn, I'm on my second soda, but I also down. I'm going to have to pee over that with this because I also downed an entire Stanley of like the. Um, of the um those flavored waters that we talked about, like, it's not our sound. Oh, oh, the um, yes, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, those, yeah those ice things that we talked about. I've done an entire Stanley of that <laughs> sitting here, so um, that was like an hour ago. I finished that, so like, all right, so timeless Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. Um, sure, I'll go first, sure, go ahead, Sal. If Thunder Rosa started painting her whole face, so that means she's gonna lose. Okay. All right. I, I, that logic makes sense. So if, she still, if she still kept half, then she would have won. <laughs> That's my logic. That logic oddly makes sense. That, mm. oddly, <laughs> that logic really makes sense. Wait, hang on a second. My recorder just froze. And luckily, I had the backup on the Zoom call, but like my recorder just froze. Give me a second here. Uh-oh. Just got to open up a new screen and just press record again, and I'll fix it in the edit. We, we, we have a backup recording, which is fine. We have a backup recording. It's not a big deal. But like, I just noticed the recorder was frozen. So I'm not sure how long that happened, but at least we have the backup recording. That's not a big deal. <laughs> That's why, that, if you sound ever wondered, this is why we have a backup recording for this very reason. Because it's a technical problem. This is why we have you, backup recording. You've got to. In this fact, for weird. Batman at once, we had three separate recordings, and it's still... All of them yeah. messed up. But Sal always makes fun of me. <laughs> Sal always makes fun of me off the air. Why do you record it? This is why I have a backup yeah. recording for this very reason yeah. right here. This You've got to. Trust yeah. me. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway um, to dad, go. Um, Tony Storm know, or Thunder Rosa? <laughs> who's going to make the best sandwich? Tony Storm or Thunder Rosa? I wish I had a more, a more inappropriate. Well, Thunder Rosa is going to use tortillas instead of bread. <laughs> wow. 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 See, I didn't even go there. Okay. I, I did, but. 
Well, let, let's, let's keep it, you know, like Tony Storm's character, let's say. Oh, no. She, that character isn't someone who's ever made a sandwich. <laughs> that that is correct. <laughs> the loser is there for it. The loser is yeah. there for it. Like, she orders the sandwich. Really good sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> How do I have uh, nothing inappropriate on my soundboard records here? How do I have nothing inappropriate? <laughs> I, 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 I have so many inappropriate clips. What happened to them? I have so many inappropriate clips. What the hell happened to those? Fuck them kids. I would have to go. Fuck them kids. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. My, my... I'm so amazing. I'm so sorry. I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> My heart goes that I want Thunder Rosa to win, but I know Tony Storm is going to hang on to it, and her protege will get involved. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Well, I, this is hard for me, because, I, I mean, Tony Storm's one of my idols now. I, I copy stuff she does in my things with the band. <laughs> like, this isn't even the part. This isn't even the This isn't even the a tiny bit. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm saying Tony Storm. Oh, that makes me smile. So, with, with your band, do you say instead of watch out for the shoe, watch out for the guitar pick? I have many props that I do throw at people. There it is. And I, I, there it I hit is. people Yay. with. I've got fake sausages I hit people with and everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I, wear a, I wear a garter on my leg like she's got. Uh, well, well she, she, as soon as I started wearing it, she stopped wearing it. I was like, oh, I bought that for you, Tony. I bought that for you. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. You, you take your gear off and kind of like fling it into the crowd. <laughs> why, why do I shows go over two hours? This conversation is like this by the show. It's the best why. part. So Tony's got to win. I don't care. Thunder Rosa, I love you, but like, no, no, it's not your time. It's not your place. Tony's got yeah, stuff that's going on. Sailed. Yeah, Tony's got storylines happening. I don't understand why we're having this match because Thunder Rosa did not lose the title. She had to vacate it. Getting this match out of the way is absolutely fine. I get that. There's no way to put the belt on Thunder Rosa. I think no. it's going to be her. It's going to be Mariah May. That's where that I'm. That would standing. work. That would That's work. Where absolutely. I'm standing right now. But we'll get I mean, ever second. since Mariah May joined, the first thing on your I mind mean, is. I just removed the, the spread. When is she going to turn? <laughs> yeah, when's she going to turn? When's she going to turn? It, I mean, instantly you're like, "Oh, that's gonna happen, isn't it?" <laughs> Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. <laughs> that's what it's I haven't even had a pick yet. It is Tony Storm. I didn't realize I didn't even a pick yet. Tony Storm. All right, next up, a six man tag match. I'm actually really excited about because I like the fact they're not going straight to the singles match. Here, mm -hmm. I'm actually excited for this. Um, it is apparently the ACDC TNT champion. Apparently, <laughs> the TNT yes. champion Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and the Ring of Honor World Champion Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews. I honestly thought on this show we were going to get Copeland versus um, Black one on one. I'm glad they're saving it for like double or nothing. I'm okay with that. I think that's cool. I like this match. I really, really like this match. Um, if only because Adam Copeland is trying his damnness to help the House of Black here. He's telling me his damnness to try to help them, help them as a team. And he brought together a really cool team with the three of them. Like this whole thing works for me. It really does. For what amounts to an undercard match that'll probably open the show, this works for me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I think for me, I don't know who's gonna win because my brain on that goes to Copeland. But I, 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 I almost think the House of Black's gonna win this. And then that'll lead to the um, actual title match down the yeah. road. Um, Dad's pointing at the screens. I'll go to him first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering about how this whole match is coming about. And my thing is, is I don't see how it's a black losing. Mm -hmm. What I do see... Malachi Black? Oh, House of Black or Malachi Black? What did you say? I heard Alistair Black. I was like, what did you say? No, House of Black. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> but what I do see is House of Black getting another member. And that would be Adam Copeland. Nah, Ooh. nah, nah. I, don't, I honestly do not... I no, that didn't work yeah. out for him in the last company. Yeah, last time he went emo, it didn't work. I don't see it happening again. I don't see this, it happen. is, this is why, you, if you're a Tony, you want to try it and see where it goes. No, yeah, maybe you know prove that you can do it right. Yeah. No, yeah. you know what you do? Adam Copeland wants to be Adam Copeland, Adam Copeland, be Adam Copeland. I think that's all this is. <laughs> like, if you're going to let Mercedes be stupid out there and be herself, let Adam Copeland be Adam Copeland. At least you can actually talk on the microphone. Um, Would this be part of the Cope Open then? No, it's not a title match. I do, I do, I do love, can I say I love the fact that it's so a corny name, but because Adam Pope named it that, I love the clip open. And I love the fact that it's random yes. as hell. And because yeah. we have, a, a 
We yeah. ran the, first of all, you know I love it. First of all, you know, and I've been, you've known this for the decade and plus we've done this show. I'm bad. I'm massive Adam, Adam Copeland Edge fan. You know this. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, I love the fact that they did this because you know a big I love open challenges in general. I love them. I love when John Cena did it. I love it when Art Cassie did it. Like I love um I love open open challenges. But the fact that we can have a randomly watch collision and all of a sudden we're seeing Adam Copeland versus um Matt Cardona out of nowhere. Yeah. I love that kind of stuff because that came out of nowhere and it was a really, really good match. And, and it ended up being a little bit of a backstory told by Ika Rikabani. Like, that's how you do an open challenge. You do a match like that and then you have the announcer tell the backstory. Like, that's how you do an open challenge. That was really well done. Well, so I, I, I said, I said last time... Like that. I said last time I was on something similar, if you remember, because I thought that what they need to do, TNT Championship, basically go full force and make it a TV championship... So uh, with old kind of rules, you know, like I would make a short time limit, 10, 15 minutes every match. And I would include the Cope Open as part of it. Make it always be open challenges. It doesn't even need like rankings or anything for this one belt. This is I, like I, a I, I chaos thing. The ratings, the rankings are dumb anyway, so I agree with that, actually. Yeah. So, um, Adam Coleman versus uh, Matt Riddle. So, Dad, um, what did you actually pick for this match? I, I, I'm going to go with House of Black. Okay, um, John? Yeah, I think Malachi Black gets the pin on Eddie Kingston because Kingston's been losing a lot lately and he's the only one without a title. I actually so, forgot to make a note. I just realized he still has the New Japan Strong Championship, but nobody cares. Yeah, but that doesn't... He technically still has it, and he's going to probably lose it anyway to Cape Kid. Yeah. So, like, it matters. You know and that mean? doesn't count in this in the AEW verse, let's say. Well, it um, that doesn't count, but John Mark is the AEW World Championship. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a proper title, though. That's a I know, I'm <laughs> For a TV show that doesn't exist. For a TV show that doesn't but, exist. But I think, yeah, Malachi gets the win. But he can't pin Copeland, because that might make him look a bit weak. So I think he pins one of the other... You know, uh, members of the team, maybe br- brutalizes them, bloodies them up. You know, so then when the title match happens, it's like, oh. And you can't pin Briscoe; he just won the title. He just won the yeah. Right. Yeah. And again, yeah. as much as we make fun of Ring of Honor, as much as we make fun of it, the fact that he won the title on the anniversary of his brother's first title reign is still one of the best things I've seen yeah. in a long, long time. Like I can't cry words here. That's pretty damn cool. And you know, one of the best things about that, like. Anyone else, you would say, oh, they're just doing it out of sympathy. But when he did it, it's like, oh, no, no, no. He actually deserves it on top of that. Like, By the way, apparently well. I found out. I found out something about that. Um, TK did not know that. Eddie Kingston realized it. Whoa. And it whoa, wait a minute. Ooh, idea whoa. to make sure he won it that night. The boss didn't realize it? Oh, well, you don't think about it. Why would you think about it? Like, why would you look at a calendar like, well, let's go back in time. If I don't want Jay Briscoe won the title. Yeah, but Kingston knew You that. would think being the boss... Of yeah, a wrestling but, company, you would be able to that. Yeah, but it's one of those situations. Technically, Jay Briscoe doesn't work here, and he doesn't. Mm-hmm. He isn't alive anymore. Like, why would you know Jay Briscoe's title history? Like, honestly, I didn't know that either. I didn't know the Briscoes. Like, I didn't know that. So, so right? what do you do as Tony Khan? You approach? Well, Eddie Kingston. Go, I forgot. And, oh, no, Eddie Kingston found out and went right. up to the and said, "This is what's happening. We're doing a title change tonight. We're doing a title change like on this night at this show." And it's happened to be super current of honor. It's happened to be that day. So perfect. Absolutely lined up perfectly with the calendar. So, so that worked out great. Sal, this is to you. You don't want to have the mid official pick. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was going along the lines of House of Black, but I don't know. I was gonna say Malachi pins Adam Copeland, and then that sets up the one on one. Also a valid answer. Absolutely valid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely valid. I mean, at the end of the day, we're sitting a builder or nothing with this show. But it is the net hate review. So, like, right. everything we're doing from here on is double or nothing bound. So, all right. Oh, fuck it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> AEW, I still run it. The AEW World 69. Nice. Tag Team Championship. <laughs> Tag Team Championship. A ladder match for some reason. It is the Young Buck versus FTR. Why is ladder match? Because Tony Khan says Oh, so. versus Vacant. We forgot to put Vacant in there. It's his title. <laughs> Vacant is giving up his title for this match. How about that? <laughs> He really is writing that into the notes. He really writing that into the notes. Um, <laughs> it's a triple threat. Yeah, um, so it's a lot of match because Tony Khan says so. Why, why not? What's wrong with it? Being, these two have had lo- like, teams have had loads of matches. Why not give it a gimmick at this point? Come on. I don't know. I, don't know. I he, get a better one. Why not make it a scaffold match? I'm just whoa, whoa. whoa. That's random. Here's three <laughs> stages of hell. What the fuck is that? Okay. So, okay. I know sounds upset with that. Why would I put the scaffold match from? Where the fuck is that? Oh, match. 
We need, oh, yeah, we need, we need the WCW triple cage. No, it, it was. It was yeah, yeah, the stages. Don't put it in the uh, internet. That don't exist. That was, was just by the time Paul DeGrasse happens. <laughs> I believe it was NWA Starcade, and you had the Road Warriors versus the Midnight Express on a scaffold match. That's the match where Jim Cornette <laughs> slipped and fell and broke his ankles. Here's my problem. When you say scaffold match, you're thinking of this legendary match. When I hear scaffold match, I think of a term about AJ Styles versus Rhino and TNA. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. First thing I think of. Yeah. <laughs> First thing I think of. So, like, <laughs> hey, yeah, you get two different memories. Um, is it obvious that Buckley is going to win these titles at this point? Is this just obvious what we're doing? That's it. I'm going to like it, yeah. That's what I'm thinking to John. I don't know. I, I'm in two minds. I'm in two minds. My initial thought was actually let FTR get this one because everybody expects the books to win. But then the the stumbling block for me, Jack Perry. Is this where he comes back and helps them win? 100% the scapegoat's going to be in this match. He's going to interfere, and we're going to have one more person added on to the new elite. It's, Which is great. I love him with them and Okada. Okada. That's a cool. Yeah. Um, oh. But is that I too obvious? That. But you know what? That'll yeah. at least make the video we can play on Dynamite make sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. But <laughs> but maybe it makes too much sense. <laughs> no, I. This is one of those times. As as we learned during WrestleMania, sometimes the obvious is what you should do. That's sometimes true. The obvious plan is what you should do. This is the same thing here. Sometimes the obvious is what you should do. <laughs> I'm in that room. Yeah, okay then. I'm gonna <laughs> reluctantly, even though they're my favorite tank team, I'm gonna reluctantly say the books. I actually think FTR should win, but I don't think they will. Um, Venus already had that go. I'm gonna stick with FTR only because I, if there is any outside interference and it's coming from Jack Perry, you know, that would be that would be it, and then that would set up a future match down the road. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a steel cage match, an I quit match, first blood match. Who knows? Isn't that called a John Moxley match? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> or you can have the uh, death match with fluorescent light tubes and explosives. Oh, don't don't get oh, my heart oh, fluttering. Oh. <laughs> my face every time I pull this wrench, every wrench down every single time. I, I haven't done that, that in a while. <laughs> All right. Um, next matchup, it is Will Ospreay versus Brandon Danielson, the main maze, and I'm uh, ordering this show. Um, <laughs> I'm ordering this damn show. Hey, yeah. I'm like, take your money, take it now. I, I want to see this match. Let's just be honest here. This is why people want to see this match. This is one of the biggest matches on this show. It's going to be the match of the night. Uh, hands down. Like, that is close. Yeah. Let's just be honest with ourselves here. We joked about it. We're talking about everything earlier. This is, the match. This is going to be the match of the night. If it's not, there's something wrong. <laughs> there's something wrong. Somebody got hurt. That's the only reason this match. Hey, hang on. Knock on wood. But um, just in case. Oh, God. Like, knock on wood. But like the only reason this match is not matching today because somebody gets hurt. Um, Osprey should win. There is no reason. Brian Hannah seems to be putting everyone else over. You might as well put over Osprey. There right. is no reason. We're in the middle. We're still in the middle of this weird light. Brian Anderson Mays do fake retirement thing as John laughed about when we first announced it. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, Osprey's winning, John. Okay, maybe I'll be controversial, right? Cause Danielson keeps losing, like you said. I actually think Will Ospreay, I'm talking about behind the scenes, not like character wise. I think he might want to respect him and let him win this. And that could set up maybe like Don Callis being very angry with him. Because he needs to, and I love the Don Callis family. I think they're hilarious. But he needs to separate from them. Yeah, why is he still with them? Like, why is he still with them? <laughs> exactly. And this why is what I'm thinking. Just, why did they just retroactively just ignore that? Like, I don't understand why they even are even in this storyline. Why did they just retroactively said? Yeah, because he oh, was whatever. never a full member anyway, was he? Yeah, you know, like, it was It was one of those things. He could have literally came out and, and Don Callis could have just ignored him. He could have reset everything and nothing would be different right now. Yeah. Um, nothing else would be different. So, so I think maybe, yeah, he loses, Don Callis gets angry, and then he ends up feuding with the family, and he can bring in, well, he can get Kyle back on his side. You know, he can reform his faction. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Dad, go. I got to go with Brian winning, and because Brian wins and Osprey taps out, 
Then you have Don Callis come out with powerhouse Hobbs, do a symphony of power bombs, have Kyle Fletcher still turn against him, and now he's ousted from the Don Callis family, and that sets up a match with Will Ospreay and the entire Don Callis family. Like, what in guts? Like... <laughs> See, that would be great. But then again, you know what? But we he's kind of fought them all already, hasn't he? Oh, I don't know now. I'm torn. Um, I don't. Did he do Hobbs? I don't think he did Hobbs. Yeah, he, he. I think he just had him at a good top, didn't he? It was, it was the Battle of the Wills. The Battle of the Wills. Was it okay? The Battle of the Wills. Remember okay. we were making fun of that promotion. We were making fun of that. Yeah, yeah. So that just happened. That literally just happened like three weeks ago. <laughs> but it didn't have steaks then. <laughs> we have steak. We're, we're, uh, I'm hungry. We're, we're, we're steak. Uh, I'm a vegetarian, go. damn it. I am not. Because <laughs> <laughs> here's 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 the other thing. What's happening in the background with Sammy? Is he still on? I, Fuck Sammy. He might still be suspended for something. I don't know. I've lost okay. track. All right. That I, yeah. funny part is, I don't even think Don Callis cares. I don't even think he even cares. That's the best part. No, because hadn't he already left the family again? I think he kicked him out. Did he kick him out? And then he would lined up with um Jer- Jericho, and Jericho. Then it, and, and then and now Jericho's hanging out with Hook, and now he's being <laughs> stole. And now um apparently he's telling Shabbat what to do. Like, like what the fuck is going on with this during life? <laughs> like maybe maybe Chris is trying to get out. That's the whole thing. At the don't even get me started on that. Um, okay. I'm going to leave that alone and move on. Uh-huh. Um, we have the... What the fuck, Sal? <laughs> I'm going to read it correctly and then read what Sal wrote. First okay. of all, AEW World Heavyweight Championship match. It is Samoa Joe taking on Swerve Strickland with Prithnata. What Sal wrote was the AEW World Swerve When I Drive Championship. <laughs> Do the music... I'm not gonna lie, that might be the funniest one we've had today. That might just be the funniest oh, one. Oh my god. Um, that actually, to your credit, that would make me pop, but I'm sorry. So, like, that would make me pop. Um, I'll start with John. Go. I think now, uh, as much as I've loved Joe being the champ, I think now's the time for the change. If you delay it any longer, I think it might hurt Swerve, um, because he's really hot, um, and making him lose again is just gonna. You know, it's just going to bring things down a little bit. And I think I think um, we talked about this uh, privately. I think the Joe title reign, you know, considering what we saw in that fight footage, I think it was like a thank you to Joe. Like, oh, thank you. You you handled this as best you could. You were the only sensible person involved here, Joe. Thank you for being, uh, you know, the, the locker room leader that everybody wants to be. I think it was a me from a lawsuit. Combination of that and, like, Oh shit! Our champions hurt. Um, what's the, and we, we may or may not have him signed to a contract. Hey Joe, <laughs> here's the title. Thank you. And now here we are. Well, you like, know he's dependable, he's and he's he's been dependable. He's been great. He's been fantastic. But Swerve is just on another level at the minute. Um, so I'm going Swerve mainly because I have a feeling we're going to get Osprey Swerve it all in, mm. and we want to start mm. the, the drive for that now. By making... Are they going to have to do the dance break in the, at the beginning of the match? Or that's the yeah. Everybody? But like, I have a weird feeling Swerve's going to win, and then it'll give him time to have a strong title reign by the time we get to All In. That's the, the thing. He needs to Osprey, defend it a bit. Exactly. In the background, Osprey will keep building up, and then he'll be a number one contender by the time we get to All In. And then we'll have the main event be them. That's where I think is we're going with this. Mm. And I think Swerve versus Osprey is a better match to promote then like it's more of like it's like a AEW AEW stars here to promote. I think it's a better match for that. We're all in. Yeah. Um Sal. I agree. Um if Swerve loses one more, I think that's just gonna kill all that momentum. Mm. Cause I feel like it's starting to slow down as it is. So I think he needs that title that title win to bump him back up. And plus, I think he deserves it. I mean, he's just been absolutely phenomenal over the past, you know, 12 plus months. Um, you know, Joe, I'm sure Joe, Joe's going to be going back to doing season two of uh, Twisted Metal because I think they're filming now. So he kind of is going to need some time off anyway. So 
uh, pull the trigger now. Just do it. Dad? Yeah, I got to go with everyone I think Swerve's going to take the title. I I think this is the time when if the iron's hot, you strike and you strike it well. And you basically That's get sure. the... Oh. But it's not the 69 title. Um, <laughs> this is where you reward someone for working hard in your organization. And this is what you and get. Thank you for in your organization after working hard. Thank you for that. <laughs> Well, there you go. Yeah. Okay, um, we, we've been here for but, two hours. I'm getting loopy. We're getting loopy at this point. We've been here for two yes. hours. <laughs> um, my thing is, is that Strickland wins, and you're going to see someone make an appearance. It's going to be MJF, and then We're, MJF on the mic. Okay. And MJF on the mic is going to say, "I'm not back yet, but the toughest opponent you're going to face for this will be Will Ospreay. And when you do." I want to be there. Is oh, wait, time out, time out, time out, time out. Let me, let me, let me, let me understand what you're saying because I know I'm a little loopy right now. But let me understand what you're saying. Go ahead. This MJF yep. is going to come out, yep, and you're going to get that pop yep. and tell him that you should go face Will Ospreay. No, basically, that's what you just said. I just wanted right. to clarify what you right. said. Here's the thing: when I, he sets it up, is I'm not 100 percent yet, but I know someone who is. And that's Will Ospreay. And my whole point, my to, point was, and I'm going to be there to see you when he kicks your ass and I, he takes the title I, from I, you. I understand what you're saying, but my whole point was in the background. Let Osprey move up the rankings, move up rankings, but move up and like win more matches to get to the fact that he's going to be number one contender. Not have the old champion come out and say, "Look, you're going to face him for whatever reason." Like I mean, I think that's silly. Besides the fact that why would you have MJF come out here when Forbidden Door is going to be along Long Island? Why would you have Forbidden Door? Why do things I'm happen? You. At, I'm asking you. Why do things happen at AEW the way they do? I'm not talking about that. I'm asking you. Yeah, you're the one booking this here. This this you're the one booking this. Right. Why would you do that here and not just wait for Long Island? Because you want to build up the drama. All right, I'm done now. I'm done now. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I've just had a thought. I've just had a thought. Right, Go ahead. assuming he's still, assuming he still is going to be working for the company after you know something that happened the other day. Maybe Swerve wins one of his first defenses. Keith Lee could come back, and because it's an easy one that you'd go, well, Swerve's Swerve's going to okay. win, but it's a good way, way to you know. Are you talking about him being in the background? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it was it was a tongue in cheek little. I'm gonna say, because we addressed that last week. That wasn't a real problem. Like we addressed that. I know, week. I know. He he didn't know. He was hanging around in the background. You know, as I said, uh, he was literally going to his seat, and he accidentally ended up behind the frame where Punk's there saying, forgetting people's names. Yeah. Like it was a weird moment anyway. That thing. could be that well, could be a good first, like um not main feud, but like a mini feud for for a swerve win, you know. Like we'll finally uh, get the combination of the Keith Lee swerve feud that we never got the combination to. Exactly. And but Keith could come back as like it. a Keith could come back as like a big heel. Because hey. Swerve's flipped now, you know. I want to see Keith do the dance. Dominic, that's that joke. Are you fat Well, it was not. Absolutely not. I love me some Keith Lee, and I want to see him do the dance like you just said. That. So, okay, let's get out of here. So I want to be close to the show. <laughs> um, so I didn't know what to pick, and this is a new song, so I just picked this. So it's uh, Sabrina Carpenter, and uh, the song is called Espresso. Sure. Okay. Um, who was I'll, on, I'll, I'll take two. Thank you. When did she current? When she had? Uh, <laughs> when did she part of the um, Coachella or something like that recently? I could have watched her videos for Coachella. Um, I believe so. One of the one, the the stupidest concert thing I've ever seen. But whatever. You got you got her both missing men in black. That was fun. Um, is, she, is she like a former Disney kid? She was on Girl with Troll. She's a Girl with Troll. But at least she's got a better career than Rowan Blanchard. <laughs> That's a different problem. Okay, right, stop. Stop. Get out of here. Go. Yeah. For more information on our show. Including where you can find on social media or watch the show on YouTube, go to the blanket and please, 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 please don't forget, comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read on show. All right, that's anything. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And if you happen support to support your local independent podcasting association, I, 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 wrestling with purple mats and 
please buy popcorn and throw That's it at the heels. That's it, Sal. I had enough. You and me, death match, fighting bongler and trampoline. Oh, we'll make this a big to do. <laughs> we'll make this a big to do. You and me, buddy. What do you say? Sponsored by Sonic. Oh, oh. Thank you. Oh, oh. It's got to be a big Sonic oh. cup on the ring mat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's in a prime. Right? We have a big Sonic logo. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this portion sponsored by Sonic. Oh my lord! <laughs> if you happen to have a local <laughs> wrestling oh, we'll right organization <laughs> you live or preside in, please patronize these people. These are the young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling, and they want wrestling. to show you what they can do. Wrestling, <laughs> wrestling, yeah, wrestling. <laughs> they want to show what they can do as far as their moves. Their okay, skills on the promo, yeah, the whole bot. their whole enchilada to get into that. I'm talking about food. I said I was hungry. <laughs> talking about food <laughs> to I get their wrestling in a, in a major wrestling organization. So please patronize these people. I had a do it well. Do it safely. <laughs> we have one world. We all have need to get along. And if you happen to see the prep from your profit, have them go buy to your nearest pizzeria. Bless it. <laughs> Uh oh, no! <laughs> I'm still, I'm still just mind blown. Um, <laughs> as usual, I don't know if you want to hear more of me. Got my podcasts: Bat Minute, Hedwig Inch by Angry Inch, Miami Minutes. You can just look any of them up. They're all for very specific movies. I haven't got any generic kind of uh, podcasts that cover a wide range of things yet. That's why he's here. That's why he's on this show. Oh. That's why I'm here. I've got a friend who keeps constantly saying to me, we need to make a wrestling podcast. And I'm like, no, because I'm on one all the time anyway. <laughs> I'm not hosting one on the side unless I get to just talk about like local wrestling or something. Blake, so are you my... No, oh. so I, I, I'm healing. <laughs> it takes a while to heal these things. And oh. the chemo treatment, it's taking, it's taking a while to heal these things on my head. That's all. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm like, what are you, Brian? Um, um, Mox? Oh, no, no. Is bleeding out of nowhere. Oh, sir, is it a pimple that no, he's Ric Flair. No, no. Oh, sir, is it is a pimple that is just taking forever to heal because of the chemo treatment. That's all it is. Okay. No, no. Whenever I. Or he's channeling his inner Sandman. <gasps> yes. Oh my lord! By the way, I think we have to put this as a sound clip eventually. Uh oh! I'm gonna make that a sound clip. <laughs> that oh yeah! So <laughs> okay, so here's the plan: in a couple of weeks, um, we're gonna be off. The, the main show is gonna be off the next couple of weeks because we're, we are post WrestleMania break. We delayed it because of the pay per view. So the next couple of weeks we're gonna be off. But here's the plan: first, Thanks, TK. Um, <laughs> first of all, look for our first round predictions of the um 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs. So that's a big deal. I love doing that. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the first round starts on Saturday. We'll get our picks in soon. Um, next week will be a new episode of Fucking Pause. Mandy returning behind the microphone. Um, that'd be a lot of fun. Me and Harvey sat down since the beginning of the year. The new Fucking Pause episode. So that'd be a lot of fun. Week after that, me and Dad are going to T2E2. And we'll have coverage of T2E2 the week after. We'll be back a couple of weeks after that. We'll be back and recap things. How was the draft post backlash? Post everything. I'm losing my voice. So let's get out of here. Thank you, John, as always, for coming on. We'll see you probably at the end of May. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, that being said, I'm Blake. I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And you're listening to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Uh, too sweet. See ya. See ya. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. And good night. Bye-bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>